Oh, good. Okay. Mike, check one, two, three. Matt Provins, Mike Ventola, checking Mike one, two, three. Test one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, shit. Get there for now. This terrible face. <laughs> Two faces made for radio. I, that's why we're oh, the radio the guys up there. Xander. Key grip. We got a key grip. This is Craig Stein's uh, announcement here. Oh, Test, test, one, two, three, yeah. test. Is there a team in Monterey? Shouldn't it be the international? Yeah, it should be. I know what I right. said to say, right? This <laughs> ought to be fun. It's going to be great. And old Matt, we're going to... The Dayton Wolf Pack, who have nothing to do with the city of Dayton. Yeah, exactly. Boards. I mean, to me, it's like, and I get it, like, you know, they're, they're working, they're doing what they got to do, but they got to be more organized. I mean, if you want to be a professional league, mm -hmm. like, it's just not enough money in it. You know, everything's based on money. If you have money, you can do things a certain way. You right. don't have money, you can. I mean, in one of them. Yeah, I put the gum on it because there's no garbage can, so I had to get my <laughs> rid of my gum. Yeah. I'm like, and I want to put on my shoes, I had nothing. I'm looking around for anything. By the way, I'm Mike, by the way. Andy's in uh, sir, uh, Clearwater. Oh, that's right. They're down there. Yeah, they're down there. Right? Oh, that's probably why we have yeah, no heater, no, no exactly. Well, oh, it's on heater, I guess. Yeah, that's why they're limited. Next and they're high school. With all the high school, he didn't want to like run people into the ground. So I was gonna. Uh, it's going not yet. The name of the head coach for the Wolfpack. Marcus Ray. But the, uh, the real. That's the guy acting head coach. Who are, who's here today? Marcus Ray. Marcus Ray yeah. Is yeah. He's a. Uh, I don't think he's got a towel. Around, oh, little guy. Chubby little guy. Tell Ashley. It is Marcus Ray as the head coach. That's what we were just trying to get. A yeah, he's, he's acting. The other guy broke, uh, tore some ligaments in a car accident earlier this week. Right. Fitting, fitting yeah. for what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, guys.
Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> should use I should use more dial, a little I more know, right? septic or uh, some dial scope. Five consecutive years in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. I guess we're waiting for something. You're watching Service Electric 2 Sports, presented in high definition. March Madness has a whole new meeting in the PPL Center in downtown Allentown, where today, are you ready for some football? That's right, it's the Lehigh Valley Steelhawks, the team that has gone to the playoffs the last five years in their opener here in the inaugural National Arena League, the NAL. We'll have all the action of the Steelhawks and the Dayton Wolfpack for you here on TV2 Sports. Now, along with my partner, Mike Ventola, I'm Matt Province saying hello and welcome to the field here. The black turf, as they call it, where the Steelhawks call home in the PPL Center. And so much has been made about the Steelhawks, a good returning nucleus, a good year last year, but... You know, the Dayton Wolfpack, a road team, is not to be taken for granted. No, absolutely. As excited as the Steelhawks are ready to get going here today, Matt, one thing that Dayton is going to look to try to prove is that they're no slouches. I mean, granted that they've kind of come together in the last month or so, but they have something to prove, especially after being kind of the last roster cuts. A lot of these guys coming together, they want something to really prove here today against Lehigh Valley. About one month of practicing and mostly without pads or helmets, so it's going to be an interesting debut. Hopefully they can pull it together, but meanwhile, Marcus Ray, who's acting as the head coach, has a quarterback not real experienced with the arena game, but they're really excited about Chris Brumfeld. No, absolutely, because he's a guy that can move around in the pocket. He can tuck it and run if he has to. And, you know, when he was at Fort Valley, he had a lot of success as well, too. So they are very high on him, and they expect him to have a real nice day. Well, here are the Steelhawks. They've had so much success. They haven't won a championship, though they've been close. But this year, a real nice returning core. Very excited about stability. And it starts at the quarterback. They have two really good ones, but Warren Smith Jr. is going to get the start, and he can really move. No, absolutely. Warren Smith, he's another guy that can not only tuck it a run, but he can make all the throws as well, too. So Lehigh Valley has a dual quarterback system that both guys are going to get the opportunity to play here today. So for Lehigh Valley, you can see why they're excited to get both of these guys out on the field. And Chris Thompson, their head coach, very excited about this his sixth year we have opening day the first ever kickoff in the nal it's the steelhawks it's the wolf pack and it's next here on tv2 sports Till the end, but I mean, they could show them. They could, you know, I don't think it's, they could show them. We're talking about the Steelhawks. I don't think it's a big deal, but other than that, I mean, I don't know what you're going to say. As long as it's stuck in the air. March Madness has a whole new meeting in the PPL Center in downtown Allentown, where today, are you ready for?
Now Province saying hello. The field here, the black turf. As they You're watching Service Electric 2 Sports, presented in high definition. March Madness has a whole new meeting in the PPL Center in downtown Allentown, where today, are you ready for some football? That's right, it's the Lehigh Valley Steelhawks, the team that has gone to the playoffs the last five years in their opener here in the inaugural National Arena League, the NAL. We'll have all the action of the Steelhawks and the Dayton Wolfpack for you here on TV2 Sports. Now, along with my partner, Mike Ventola, I'm Matt Province saying hello and welcome to the field here, the Black Turf as they call it, where the Steelhawks call home in the PPL Center. And so much has been made about the Steelhawks, a good returning nucleus, a good year last year. But, you know, the Dayton Wolfpack, a road team, is not to be taken for granted. No, absolutely. As excited as the Steelhawks are ready to get going here today, Matt, one thing that Dayton is going to look to try to prove is that they're no slouches. I mean, granted that they've kind of come together in the last month or so, but they have something to prove, especially after being kind of the last roster cuts. A lot of these guys coming together, they want something to really prove here today against Lehigh Valley. About one month of practicing and mostly without pads or helmets, so it's going to be an interesting debut. Hopefully they can pull it together, but meanwhile, Marcus Ray, who's acting as the head coach, has a quarterback not real experienced with the arena game, but they're really excited about Chris Brumfeld. No, absolutely, because he's a guy that can move around in the pocket. He can tuck it and run if he has to, and, you know, when he was at Fort Valley, he had a lot of success as well, too, so they are very high on him, and they expect him to have a real nice day. You know, here are the Steelhawks. They've had so much success. They haven't won a championship, though they've been close. But this year, a real nice returning core. Very excited about stability. And it starts at the quarterback. They have two really good ones, but Warren Smith Jr. is going to get the start, and he can really move. No, absolutely. Warren Smith, he's another guy that can not only tuck it a run, but he can make all the throws as well, too. So Lehigh Valley has a dual quarterback system that both guys are going to get the opportunity to play here today. So for Lehigh Valley, you can see why they're excited to get both of these guys out on the field. And Chris Thompson, their head coach, very excited about this his sixth year we have opening day the first ever kickoff in the nal it's the steelhawks it's the wolf pack and it's next here on tv2 sports
That looks like a 12. Oh, oh. McFadden. Hold on, I'll tell you in a second. I think. Hold on. Which one McFadden were you? McFadden. Okay. 
<clears throat> is 13, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. I can hear can you, you, my friend. Can you hear us? Okay, good. Beautiful. B E A U D. That's fine. If you, you have le- you have uh, the Steelhawks starting lineup, I'm guessing. Okay. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Do you, do you want us to give you that or no? Too late or? Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. 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 <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I mean, gotcha. Their guys didn't have numbers till to, to, to about an hour and a half ago. You know right. what I mean? Like, uh. No, no, he is not. No. He's shorter and he's got a bigger belly. That's not him. That's that guy's not. yoked up, though. That's Don't not him. He had a New York Giants Super Bowl right now, by the way. Where's your coach? He was in the front. He, was in the, in the he hasn't run out yet. Maybe he's going to be following this team. Right, the head coach. Oh, he's wearing a cap. Yeah, he's wearing a he's Baseball wearing a cap. cap. <laughs> yep. There he is. On there the right, he is. There, there he is. Him. Right there. Yeah, got him. Yep. Yeah. All right, Ashley, your quarterback for uh, the Steelhawks is 8. Your fullback is 22. Your receivers are 1, 3, and 4. Your uh, offensive linemen are 72, 75, and 99. Is that 8? Okay. Okay. You want our defense? Okay, defensive line, 92, 97, and 58. Linebackers are 54 and 12. Your defensive backs are 2, 21, and 24. Xander on this sheet. Uh, you, um, we can guess at the other team's starters. They never gave us our official starters. But if you want, we, I mean, what, no one's going to know the difference if we're off on a guy because they're all going to play. Right. Okay, you want to do? Yeah, Mike, I'm going to. Uh, Mike, 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 he's going to give you them. Okay. Just going to give a shot. All right. Uh, quarterback will be um, number four.
Just let me know when you want me to start giving you the other ones. Uh, yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, I can. can you hear Mike? Okay. So uh, I gave you the quarterback, right, number four. Um, let's see. Wide receivers will be number one. Yep, number one would be Hicks. Number two, Robinson. And I believe, I'm trying to see here, um, I think it's Albert, uh, number nine. You say quarterback? No, their quarterback is quarterback four. Quarterback four. Quarterback is four, Brumfield. Brumfield, excuse me. For them. Yeah, that's a quarterback, yeah. Yep. All righty, let's see more offense. Um, okay. Um, Try to think. Because uh, I get in uh, fullback will be number 12. Yes, yep, Guillaume. And let me know when you want offensive line. Okay, uh, 95, 70, and 75 are the offensive line. I think I give you eight. How many did I give you there for starters? Did I give you seven or eight? Okay, perfect. So, and then you need defense now, correct? Okay, uh, defense um, on the line will be 10, 11, and 48. Hold on, let me say that. Uh, let me make sure I got that correct. Uh, it'll be, um, yes, yep, 10, uh, 10 green, 11 Jones, and 48 Murphy. Uh, linebacker will be 6 Appleby 14 Green and 21 uh, Carlisle yep and defensive back should be number 8 Bolton and number 3 Alford you got it. Also on the offensive line, number 75, Curtis Neeler. On the defensive line, number 92, Josh Bradley. Also on the defensive line, number 97, Eddie McClan. And also on the offensive line, number 99, Sean Lockett, your Leigh Valley Steelhawks.
You're watching Service Electric 2 Sports, presented in high definition. March Madness has a whole new meeting in the PPL Center in downtown Allentown, where today, are you ready for some football? That's right, it's the Lehigh Valley Steelhawks, the team that has gone to the playoffs the last five years in their opener here in the inaugural National Arena League, the NAL. We'll have all the action of the Steelhawks and the Dayton Wolfpack for you here on TV2 Sports. Now, along with my partner, Mike Ventola, I'm Matt Province saying hello and welcome to the field here, the Black Turf as they call it with the Steelhawks call home in the PPL Center. And so much has been made about the Steelhawks, a good returning nucleus, a good year last year. But, you know, the Dayton Wolfpack, a road team, is not to be taken for granted. No, absolutely. As excited as the Steelhawks are ready to get going here today, Matt, one thing that Dayton is going to look to try to prove is that they're no slouches. I mean, granted that they've kind of come together in the last month or so, but they have something to prove, especially after being kind of the last roster cuts. A lot of these guys coming together, they want something to really prove here today against Lehigh Valley. About one month of practicing and mostly without pads or helmet, so it's going to be an interesting debut. Hopefully they can pull it together, but meanwhile, Marcus Ray, who's acting as the head coach, has a quarterback, not real experienced with the arena game, but they're really excited about Chris Brumfeld. No, absolutely, because he's a guy that can move around in the pocket. He can tuck it and run if he has to, and, you know, when he was at Fort Valley, he had a lot of success as well, too, so they are very high on him, and they expect him to have a real nice day. Well, here are the Steelhawks. They've had so much success. They haven't won a championship, though they've been close. But this year, a real nice returning core. Very excited about stability. And it starts at the quarterback. They have two really good ones, but Warren Smith Jr. is going to get the start, and he can really move. No, absolutely. Warren Smith, he's another guy that can not only tuck it a run, but he can make all the throws as well, too. So Lehigh Valley has a dual quarterback system that both guys are going to get the opportunity to play here today. So for Lehigh Valley, you can see why they're excited to get both of these guys out on the field. And Chris Thompson, their head coach, very excited about this his sixth year we have opening day the first ever kickoff in the nal it's the steelhawks it's the wolf pack and it's next here on tv2 sports A look into the PPL Center, Mike Ventola, I'm Matt Province, the two of us bringing you opening day in the NAL, a brand new league, and hopefully for the Steelhawks a chance at some stability. This will be their fourth league in the last six years. They've done very well no matter where they've been, Mike, but it's exciting now because you have a lot of good teams and some very competitive squads in the NAL. No, and absolutely, and I know with Coach Thompson as well as he has been here as the head coach of the Steelhawks, having gone to the playoffs. He's done a very good job of getting hit certain guys that fit his system on offense and defense, and they have had a lot of success here, the Steelhawks. So, And when you and I got a chance to talk to him before this game, he expects another playoff-caliber team and another playoff-caliber season, but hopefully looking to go a little bit further. Eight and three a year ago, got to the postseason, as we've talked about, for the fifth consecutive time. And there is Marcus Ray. We'll be talking about the Wolfpack, but they are in for a very odd year. They will be the Road Warriors of the NAL. They had a stadium deal in Dayton, Ohio, that fell through in February. 
They were homeless, weren't sure they were going to have a team. Obviously, the NAL wanted to keep the balance of eight teams, so they will play, but they will play based out of the Jackson or the Atlanta area because it's regional for a lot of the teams in the NAL, and they will play nothing but road games. So I tell you, it'll be a tough chore for Marcus Ray and the head coach who's not here. We do want to wish our uh, well wishes to Kerry King Brown, the head coach, had a car accident earlier in the week, will be fine, but uh, couldn't make the trek up here to Lehigh Valley. This time, we'll probably see him when they return later in the year. No, absolutely. And, you know, for the this Wolf Pack, and that's why they have to have the mentality, Matt, of going one game at a time. They can't be worrying too much about the schedule ahead of them because up until just this trip here, they hadn't really practiced in full pads just getting their helmets now so you know it was a lot of light practicing trying to do as much as they can from a conditioning standpoint so uh, for the wolf pack here today it's going to be very interesting to see how they can adjust here especially as well as the Steelhawks are looking to be in the nal here this season and there is our own sideline reporter put billing really maybe doing her best jeff triplet impersonation that's all now. <laughs> she flips the coin christy will be joining us with information all throughout the broadcast but it is an opening day here sponsored by service electric fans in attendance getting a service electric sponsored cap we do thank service electric and uh, and again their contributions here to the steelhawks as well as with the phantoms and iron pigs etc and uh, we are underway as we've gotten that coin toss done and i tell you what christy i thought she was a good reporter her coin tossing ability is top 10 in the country well i could see why service electric sends her out there to do the <laughs> coin toss because i don't think there's anybody better here at this point no disrespect to everybody else you know our crew was fantastic but look how well she did out there so and she will be giving us more information, of course, throughout the course of the day. You look at Thompson and uh, the former quarterback standout at Bloomsburg, now taken to the coaching career, has had nothing but success. You talk about this team. Okay, we know that there's a good nucleus. All the receivers are returning, and they feel like they've got enough returning players, more so than any year in the past. Where he's a little bit concerned, Mike, when we talk to him, they want to see if the offensive line can gel. They've got a lot of rookies on the O-line. They have a lot of new faces in the secondary, but that might not be a bad thing because he's excited about the talent level. No, and absolutely, though, yes, some new faces, but these are going to be quote-unquote old faces from different teams, and that's why he puts them under the shelf of some new faces. So he's excited to see how they will transition to being Steelhawks, but that's why he sought them out and brought a few of these new players in on the offensive defensive lines and, of course, in the secondary. So, And he loves at Athleticism, Matt. So we'll see a lot of athleticism from these Steelhawks here today. You look there on your screen, the kicker wearing number 16 is in his 16th season playing in arena football. That is James Terry, a guy that goes all the way back to the original AFL 2. And uh, we talked to him before the game, very personal guy, does some media work too, uh, aside from the football field. But here he is playing in yet another season, and he will kick off as the Steelhawks will go on offense to begin the 2017, the inaugural NAL season here of Arena Football. See Darius Prince there, the receiver he'll be looking to try to help return this opening kickoff for the Steelhawks. But, you know, for Terry, he's got a pretty good leg. And it's underway. The inaugural NAL season. The Steelhawks competing, and the ball is fumbled. It's on the turf, and who's got it? It's on the turf in the end zone. And it looks like the Steelhawks may have gotten the top of it today. No, at the bottom of the pack. It is Tyler Mickens, and what a start to the inaugural franchise for the Dayton Wolfpack. How about starting your season and your organization's history, picking up a fumble in the end zone for a touchdown? We talked about something about looking to prove. I mean, and you kind of see there, he Prince, he took his eye off the ball a little bit. And, you know, when instead of trying to worry about the run, make the catch first and then going forward. But maybe some a little excitement, anxiety being its opening day. But, you know, we talked about Dayton looking for something to prove. Well, here they are already up 6 nothing. So Mickens gets the touchdown. What effort, boy. That thing was on the floor. It went through about, oh, four, five, six different sets of hands. And at the bottom of the scrum, Mickens, who had the first crack at it for the Wolfpack, finally came away with it. And how about that for a team that arrived three hours late to the hotel yesterday, got here <laughs> after 10.30 at night, they get the first points on the kickoff. And now a flag down and a delay of game. So maybe the celebration <laughs> diminished. We get a look at the officials and uh, your referee, Michael Davis, Joe Clarkson, the ump. Bob Hefferin, the head linesman. Line judge is Christian Keel, and the back judge is Steve Kinney. 
So now after the penalty, Tyree's going to get another chance here to kick. And, you know, I think we're going to see him quite a bit here today. Yeah, now we had talked with him earlier. You might see him drop kick. You get an extra point when you drop kick because they're worried about the snaps and the holds. Now here it looks more like the traditional extra point try. And, well, no, because of the bad snap, he will drop kick it. And well, now let's see if the Steelhawks can return it. And they will not. The ball is picked up by Alvarez. And it will be 6 nothing. Wolfpack, we talked about her ability to flip a coin. Let's go down and see her ability to report. It's Christy Fulkerson. Well, thanks, Matt. I think I did a good enough job as I could, right, for the Steelhawks. So you talk about Dayton being a road warrior type of team. Well, the Steelhawks, maybe night warriors. There was Phantoms hockey in here on Friday night, Saturday night, WWE wrestling. So this organization couldn't get in until about 1 o'clock this morning. They worked through the night to get the turf down, the boards up, and everything ready for arena football. They also hosted a dance clinic this morning, a skills clinic that the coaches and players were here to be a part of as well. Coach Thompson did say, maybe we're running on fumes, but very excited to get their seventh season of football underway. He said we did have a really great preseason camp, a solid week of practice, and he has been very impressed with this group of both veterans and rookies. They had over 3,300 tickets sold before today, so hoping to have a really good crowd to cheer these guys on to a win where a come from behind one now, guys. <laughs> Well, no one could have suspected that. And I could tell you all the theories about what's going to happen in a game. But how about that for the Wolfpack, a team that has basically been practicing together for just one month. You talked about it earlier that they didn't even have pads, helmets for most of those practices. And before you could even really breathe or exhale, they've got a 6 nothing lead. And, you know, for them, that is about as good of a start as they could have hoped for now. I think they would have liked to have seen that drop kick have a better effort. <laughs> so, and But when you're a road team, you want to try to do what you can to take the home crowd out of it. So there was a little bit of um, that happening already after that opening possession there for Dayton. So, But now for Lehigh Valley, what they can do here now is have a clean opening kickoff and then get back to what they have done so well in the past is moving the ball well on offense. Terry boots it away again, this time squibs it, bounding ball, and eventually it's going to be picked up by Lehigh. And look out, this could be a point. They've got him in the end zone. Renford can't get out. And so that's going to be some more scoring here. Right after not getting the extra point, they're going to come away with the Uno. So now, as the officials are looking to say it's going to be first down from the one-yard line. So already some mishandling. I think the yeah. officials here are talking it over. And, and you can see the 16-year-old Wiley veteran, James Terry, is in there saying, wait a second now. It's not going to be. They're going to give it to them at the one-yard line. So. That is where the Steelhawks are going to take over. And a crazy start to this game as that ball was able to squeak through right past Trolley. And you can see there he was out of the end zone. He did not field it in the end zone. So he eventually got tackled back there instead of the one point and the ball at the five-yard line. Instead, the Steelhawks right outside the chalk of their own end zone. That's where they'll start in an ominous beginning to the season for a team expected to have a very good year in the NAL. Man in motion is Renford. Back to throw. Smith looking, has a man, and it's complete across midfield. Shedding a tackle, breaking free is Prince. He atones for the earlier fumble, and he gets the touchdown. It was a flag on the play, but Darius Prince, outstanding job of making that reception. A little bit underthrown, but a penalty going against the defense. It's going to be a touchdown here for the Steelhawks. Well, you told me we'd have a high-scoring game, the excitement of arena football action, and we've had essentially three plays in this game, two kickoffs, and touchdowns there. And remember, this is an interesting combo. The missed tackle was by Tyler Mickens, who recorded the touchdown after the fumble by Prince. Well, a little poetic justice as Prince sheds the tackle of Mickens, and it's a 6-6 game. So now we're about even here. So now <laughs> we're going to see the extra point here being taken. Spencer... Hotelling, as we're going to get a chance to see him after what was a pretty successful campaign a season ago. At 63 points. Went to school at Susquehanna here locally in Pennsylvania. Played a little baseball, too, I believe, Matt, in yeah, his day. Had a chance to play professionally. Chose the football route, and here he is kicking for the Steelhawks. And drills it through. And the Steelhawks have their first lead, but there is a flag on the play. We'll wait and see what the ruling is. Might have been... A little early movement, not 100% sure, but I think the officials now are getting a chance here to go Illegal over. defense, <laughs> linebacker blitzing. The score's good. The penalty will be enforced on the first play after the kickoff. 
So Lehigh Valley up by one now. And there's Jimmy T waving the flag here as they have their first lead of 2017. And you know, you wonder how much of that lack of communication deals with the fact these guys haven't had but a month of practice. Marcus Ray kind of fitting for the Road Warrior team that came together at the last second. He's not the head coach, though he's acting again with the uh, injury sustained by head coach Brown. But Ray's obviously a guy who played at this level, a world of experience and uh, certainly capable. He's got to reel these guys in. Two plays on the defensive side and two illegal defense calls. Well, we saw a good first play there by Lehigh Valley and you know for Darius Prince did a nice job but now and you know with arena football it's like anything else obviously games are tend to be higher scoring but you know for coach Thompson he really is excited about this defense so now from his standpoint hoping to see them get out on the field here and try to go up against this offense for Dayton that has not had much continuity continuity with one another so but Let's have a good kickoff here if you're Lehigh Valley. How about the poor guys in the truck? They've been waiting to give us the lineups, the starters for both teams, Dayton and Lehigh Valley. We had a kickoff lead to a touchdown. We had the kickoff that was nearly a new nose, actually taken out to the one yard line. And then you had a touchdown the next play. This has been fast and furious. And it's the home team up 7-6. And Hotelling will show off that strong leg as he kicks it off back deep. Looks like that is, uh, who's back there? That's uh, Brian Robinson. Robinson went to Southwestern Oklahoma, rookie on this team, and he can fly. So keep an eye on number two in the Wolfpack uniform. Strong kick by Hotelling. Won't get through the uprights, and it will go out of bounds. So Hotelling boots one, and it'll be at the five-yard line where we'll see the offense for the first time set up for Marcus Ray's Dayton Wolfpack. Let's look at the starting lineup, Mike, and we talked about Brumfield in the open. They love their receivers here. Hicks, Robinson, and Alberti. Guillaume, the fullback, and then three very good offensive linemen. He says he's got guys who have good footwork in Demarcus Johnson, William Kohlheim, and Terry Omar Johnson. And as you see with that offensive line, and they're going to look to have to really try to protect up front for Brumfeld, who they're very high on, but Brumfeld trying to bring a lot of his experience from his collegiate days and some other arena league experience. So we're going to see him try to run this offense for the first time. But you look at those bruising linemen up front, how they can match up against that defensive front for Lehigh Valley can really help dictate this game a lot here today. And let me correct myself, too. The ball would have been at the 20 on the kickoff, but because of the illegal defense on the extra point, it's the 15-yard line, not the 5 where we're going to see Brumfield take control of the offense. And let's see what this team, again, very inexperienced together, can do in their first series. The big man, the fullback, powers forward for four. And that's Guillaume, a guy that played his college football at Missouri State. And boy, is he a powerful runner. And a bruising runner with that. But did you see Joe Koontz coming up and getting the tackle as, there as well, losing his helmet in the process. <laughs> so you can see as he's running, he's bruising, and he's hitting hard. How excited is Chris Thompson, by the way, to have not only Koontz but Alvarez together. First time they're playing linebacker together in the same game. Guillaume powers forward, shy of the line of game by about a yard. And it will be third and one for the Wolfpack. So a couple of runs here, and, and you could see here for Coach Ray that he's looking to maybe use the run to help set up the pass. And now we'll see here with a third and short if they're going to look to run it again or look to throw it for the first time. Pikarski, the tackle on the last play again. They hand it off, and they weren't fooling anybody. The ball's jarred loose. It's on the turf. It's picked up, and it's a Steelhawks touchdown. Their second of the game. Tommy Dover, a defensive end, found the loose ball, and he rumbles for six. Tommy Dover was all over it, and I think that penalty illegal formation. is going Dover against Dayton on the illegal on formation. The so Lehigh Valley touchdown. getting a touchdown. Now let's get a look at the replay. It looks like the ball may have been pried loose by Koontz. It was. Koontz ripped it out. Dover picking up that thing. And he had nothing but, uh, I can't say green ahead of him. We've got the black turf here, of course, at the PPL Center. And Tommy Dover makes it a 13-6 game. And there is Koontz. And boy, he is off to a great start. A couple of tackles early on. A couple of tackles. But one thing we are seeing here right now, Matt, is we're seeing some turnovers. And we are seeing some sloppiness a little bit. But Lehigh Valley, though, has done a nice job of recovering. 
And we'll see now if Dayton can recover on their next possession. And again, hoteling couldn't be more perfect through the uprights. So back-to-back -to -back touchdowns for the Steelhawks. We're going to take a break. Another illegal formation on the defense. And you can see where the lack of communication is a very big factor early on for this new, newly formed Wolfpack team. All right, let's break here. 14-6 Steelhawks on TV2 Sports. Dover, the touchdown on the defensive side of the football for your Steelhawks, who lead 14-6, Matt Province, and of course, Mike Ventola, Carl Grave, our statistician, and Stash, the producer today, and even have a spotter in the booth, Xander Province, making his debut here on Service Electric. Meanwhile, 14-6, and hoteling will be kicking off in a moment. And as you can see, open day always festive, and as Christy reported on earlier, Pretty busy day here at the PPL Center and very good for the football community here in the Valley. Absolutely, taking a break coming out of the March Madness world, as you mentioned, in our open mat and getting a chance to enjoy some football as, you know, usually spring and summer, it's preparation for other areas of football, but it is arena football season and it's extremely exciting. So they're pumped about their Steelhawks football and they should be up 14 to six right now are taking advantage of Dayton's mistakes here early. So we'll see now if we can see some consistency and I'm excited to see, though, how Dayton can answer here on offense because they were so excited, Coach Ray and his staff, to really see this offense gel, even despite not being together all that much. I know you're excited to see Hotelling plow one through the uprights for a deuce, and he was a little bit off to the left his first try. And remember, there was another illegal formation on the defense on the extra point, so they, Dayton keeps backing itself up. And again, you just wonder, the lack of communication had hurt them on their PAT try earlier today. We've seen a lot of penalties. Maybe five now, as this is a very strong kick, and just misses. He got closer to the deuce to no telling, but maybe about two feet to the left of the upright. And so the Wolfpack will again take over. I feel like he'll get one by the end of the day. I just, he was very close there, probably at his next kickoff or two. He's looking to get one. And you know what, the beauty of the ball going into stands, Matt? A souvenir. You know, it's no secret that you and I both work in minor league baseball here locally, and one of the allure to go into those games is getting the foul balls. But I tell you what, there's actually more of a value on a football. That's a more expensive item. And these kids, these youngsters who are able to fetch these balls that go into the, the stands, they get to keep them. Another reason to come out here That's why and you check out the Steelhawks. Kids always in the front row. But we'll see now, Matt, as Dayton's going to have the ability to start here from their own 20-yard line. And I would like to see Brumfield try to air it out a little bit. You know, the running was good earlier, but ultimately in a poor handoff, it resulted in a fumble. I want to see Brumfield try to throw it a little bit. 14-6, Brumfield still back there. We're going to see their other quarterback as well throughout the course of the day, Moreland. Brumfield's going to tuck it. Now he throws on the run, nearly picked off, and then caught on the carom. It's a touchdown. It's Robinson off the deflection, and the Wolfpack score immediately, and we are back and forth here from PPL Arena. This is unbelievable from the PPL Center. I thought it was a sure-handed interception. And Brumfield, I think he at that point was just trying to do all he can to avoid the sack. He airs it out. And Eddie Ume, he should have had the interception. But luckily there for Dayton, Brian Robinson was right where he needed to be. A little immaculate reception, -esque, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and then you got Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, these uniforms, I keep thinking this guy, the, the dreadlocks looks like Larry Fitzgerald, makes plays like Larry Fitzgerald does Brian Robinson, as you saw the touchdown a moment ago. They'll try for two here. Going for it to tie it up with eight minutes and running here from the PPL Center in downtown Allentown. Brumfield, Guillaume next to him. Gets the snap, surveys, fires, and... It was deflected, so no pass interference as it was Trent Hicks, the intended receiver. Didn't love the fact that he was dragged down by Dom Joseph, but a completely legal play by Joseph. 
So Dayton, after a little help, getting back on the scoreboard here now. And, you know, for the Steelhawks, they can't be too upset at themselves. That was kind of a, a freak play there for the Wolfpack. But at the end of the day, the Wolfpack cashed in. So, you know, for Lehigh Valley here, now they're going to get a chance to go back on offense as Coach Thompson here as he looks on. And I'm sure he's a little befuddled wondering what just happened, but still with a two-point lead. And that's one thing, too, that because Dayton from their special teams and they're gonna to look to try to rely on it as much as they can, but right now it has not really done all that it could, especially after you saw from that two-point conversion attempt. Can you imagine how difficult, when you only have a team for a month, not even practicing in pads, you've gotta go over your offense, your defense, but you can't leave out special teams. And maybe ironically, they scored their touchdown in the very first play of the game on special teams. That was the kick that was muffed and eventually recovered in the end zone by Tyler Mickens. But I mean, the challenges are numerous here for Dayton and will be all year long, but you gotta love the fact that these guys love football that much that they're willing to travel on the road. They put in extra time. Even when they didn't have practices, the quarterbacks and receivers would have a text chain. Guys would meet uh, any area they could find down in the Atlanta region to practice and work on their timing and their plays and so be it work there, albeit off a deflection. And the thing about it too, Matt, is, and what's excited here about the NAL, and you know, with this being, of course, new league here for Lehigh Valley, and they're extremely excited about being a part of the NAL, is that there are so many players that are trying to do all they can to get into the NAL. It's a very competitive, it's a, from what we have seen already, a very exciting uh, league already here, with even still 7.47 to go here in the first quarter. So, you know, that's why for these guys here today, they understand that they have to play well because there's always somebody knocking at the door to try to get in and be a part of this roster. And some of these guys have teams that are keeping a good eye on them at higher levels of play. We'll talk about some of those guys as we go on. Booted away by the veteran Terry. And the ball was eventually picked up off a of bounce and right across midfield for the Steelhawks. And that was Matt Trolley, a rookie they're very excited about. Now Matt Trolley with a good return, getting it out to midfield. And as we take a look here at this starting lineup and, you know, quarterback Warren Smith Jr. getting the start here today. But we will see Ray Wagner at some point, but keep an eye on that fullback, Bradley. He's a bruiser. And, of course, very good receivers in Renford, Oliver Jr., and Prince. So, and then you look at the defensive side, that middle linebacker, Aaron Appleby. Coach Racing very high on him. So this, to me, is going to be the exciting part seeing Lehigh Valley's offense against his Dayton defense. 14-12, Steelhawk lead. There's the rumbling fullback carrying men across the 20 down at the 15-yard line, very close to a first down on the rumble by a guy they call Godzilla in Y. Reese Bradley. Remember the old Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Mike Allstott? He yeah. kind of reminds me of Mike Allstott a little bit with how big of a bruiser he is. And you could just see taking that hand off and nice little cut coming on in and they had to gang tackle him in order to bring him, bring him down. I tell you, first contact was actually my orgo had the carry, and the first contact was by Rakeem Carlisle, a guy they call Rocky. That's not an easy tackle to make. They swing it out in the flat. Oliver Jr. bangs up against the boards inside the 10-yard line, and the Steelhawks continue to move the football. Eventually, the tackle made by Isaac Alford. And he had eight touchdowns last season, and you know, Matt, did a nice job, helped getting the first down here for Lehigh Valley. And right now the Steelhawks are moving extremely well. And, and I like already how Oliver Jr. is seeing that he's having a nice command of this offense. Back behind him is Mayorga who stays in there. He had the big rumble to start the drive. Man in motion is Prince. It's Mayorga. And he's upended, falls forward and loses the football. Picked up by Mickens. Mickens sheds a tackle. Mickens tripped up eventually, shy of the 20-yard line. And boy, is Tyler Mickens, the guy that started his career at Auburn. He has been very busy today for the Wolfpack. Malcolm Moulton helped tackle Mayorga. And Mayorga is in pain right now because, as you can see, the low hit and for Moulton did exactly what he needed to do in trying to tackle a big guy is go towards the legs, but sadly for Mayorga, he turned in an, uh, in an awkward position, and right now he's down in pain, and we hope that he's oh, okay. No. We yeah. hope that he's all right. There's Mickens, who has picked up two fumbles already today in the season, 
is not even 10 minutes old. So Mickens has been around a lot of activity. And Mayorga, this is a guy that they're very excited about. He's been in the league before. He was part of a Beijing team that won the China Arena Football League Championship in the fall after last year playing for the Philadelphia Yellow Jackets. He can play linebacker as well. So the fact that he's down and the way it was kind of a twist and his lower part of the extremities kind of stayed planted as he was spinning and turning has you very concerned. You know, and you see the entire staff and now it looks like they're asking for more assistance as we see Tommy Dover and a couple other Steelhawks are making their way out onto the field and it looks like they may have to try to lift him off or try to do what they can to try to help him yep. out. It's not real good right now for Mayorga, but with more information on this kid that was expected to have a big role with this team, let's go down to Christy Fulkerson. Yeah, that's right, guys. You know, talking to Coach Thompson coming into the season, they were really excited about these two fullbacks that they did bring in. They said they had to made a big effort, I guess you would say, in the offseason to upgrade at that position. In the past, they've had a runner or a blocker. Now they have both with Wyrie's Bladley and, and Rustin Mayorga, of course, right now in excruciating play pain unfortunately on the ground here but he did say with the new level of competition in this league that they needed to find a way to compete at that position it really opens a new dimension for them offensively John Alvarez who last year played that position more of a lineman so this year they're really hoping to add that new dimension again to the offense and a really difficult hit there on Mayorga and it looks like the team is going to have to carry him off I'll try to get an update for you guys in a little bit, but certainly doesn't look good in his first game with this team. No, I, you'd have to think something down there with the knee, maybe the knee or even lower than that, but he just twisted awkwardly, and he's a big dude. They lift him off. He's 6 feet 280, and, you know, when you're that big, a lot of times you, you're going to get chopped down low, and that's what happened there. He got hit low, spun around, ball came loose, and now let's see if Dayton, Again, a new team that's just playing together for the first time really ever. Had very little experience playing as a unified group in the past. Can continue to stay in this game and maybe even take a lead back here in the first quarter. And you wonder too now as Lehigh Valley was really getting momentum and, you, and until that fumble there looked like Lehigh Valley was going to go in again. So now for Dayton here, they have a chance to cash in, take the lead. And to me, I think it's almost got to be 100% that they need to because especially after turnovers early and some of the missed opportunities that for the Wolfpack here they need to cash in here because right now that was a big hit for them you know for Mayorga and like we said we hope that Mayorga's back and and you know going back to what Coach Thompson when you and I had a chance to talk with him Matt athletic guys so now it's got to be already next guy's got to step up yeah and really a shame because Chris Thompson was so excited about what he had and you know, we're finally going to have a good core and a very experienced, very talented group. And not even a quarter in, he loses a guy that was one of his two fullbacks. And you can see, I mean, here he's not pleased. No, and as right now, Alvarez, Chris Alvarez, as he makes his way back into the game. And for now, as the officials here are getting a chance to talk things over, but still here for the Wolfpack, we're hoping that at least from my standpoint, I'm hoping to see Chris Brumfield move it as well as he did a little bit earlier. Now, I know it was an interesting catch and reception that allowed the Wolfpack to get their first touchdown, but or their second touchdown, rather. So we'll see now as the whistle sounds here, Matt, see how they can move here on offense. All right. Here we are early on. A lot of stats with already all these scores that we have seen, 14-12. Three combined first downs in the game. We've had a lot of big plays. It's the fullback. It's Guillaume twisting and turning and picking up a hard three on first down. This run there by Guillaume. Ran the ball well on the first drive. But then ultimately, that led into a turtle. Joe Kuntz with another tackle. And uh, I tell you, Kuntz has come out ready to play and that's a tribute really to the excellent camp he had great offseason training Chris Thompson saying how he was a guy that came in ready to go and he has played that way here in the first quarter throwing out on a slant caught but completely leveled was the receiver there Hicks tackle on the play was made by Ume and uh, it'll be third and roughly about five that just picked up a couple of yards well there was a very good throw there by Brumfield, but 
not much to show after that because the Steelhawks were right there to make the tackle. So now we're going to have to see Brumfield look to try to do what he can here because I would highly expect him to throw here. Wouldn't expect him to run it here, especially on third down. Third and five, 352 and counting first quarter from the PPL Center in Allentown. Man in motion is Hicks. They're going to try it for him. Hicks open. Hicks cannot hold on. The ball came out when he was hit by Ume, who broke up a long completion. And now Hicks on the ground, writhing in a little discomfort. Already now our second injury here on the field, but what a, for Eddie Ume, did a nice job making a good recovery. And, you know, it was a pretty good throw there by Brumfield. And if the catch could have been made there by Hicks, who knows what could have happened after that. But as you see the, the replay here, and he had both hands on it. And to me, you know, the old adage, if you get your hands on it, you got to make the catch. Yep, and a good job in recovery by Ume because he got beat there. Obviously, Hicks was open, but he came back to the play. Good closing speed, and he got there just after the ball hit the hands of Hicks. But uh, short enough or quick enough, Mike, where Hicks didn't have a time to really put it away, you know, really get his clutches on it. So Ume came back. Now you hope that Hicks is okay, but two guys down on back-to-back -back drives. First for the Steelhawks, it was Mayorga, and now here it's Trent Hicks. So Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, you want to watch Breaking the Ice, all things Phantoms as they continue to make a push towards the postseason. Of course, it's hosted by PPL Chicky and Pete's down here in the lobby. And you can watch all the action in high definition, 5.02. And uh, that will, again, be 7 o'clock tomorrow, Breaking the Ice here from the PPL Center. So had a very good season. Yeah, they really have. Steelhawks expected to have a very big season. Iron Pigs, another property, Service Electric covers, expected to have a big season. And, uh, Mike, something about the Reading Phillies, who last year had, what, the second-best record in all of minor league baseball? Well, for fans here in the Lehigh Valley, they're going to be the reciprocants of uh, the Bash Brothers and Dylan Cousins and Reese Hoskins, it looks like. So uh, right now, sports here in the Lehigh Valley, it's where it's got to be from the ice the playing field and it's good to see Trent Hicks they'll make his way off the field and he's okay yeah you wonder if maybe they're going to check him for a concussion he looked a little bit wobbly coming off you know there was nothing like an extremity issue like we saw with Mayorga so he'll get looked at but like you said encouraging that he's off under his own power and now fourth down so a big play early on as the Wolf Pack try to continue to spar with this Goliath and the Steelhawks now, interesting Surprised we don't see James Terry out there and trying for a field goal, but instead. We're going for Robinson. All kinds of contact. Did he hold on? He holds on. No, it's dislodged as he hits the ground. But a flag down, and it looks like there could be some type of penalty on the secondary for the Steelhawks. We'll wait and see. Rodney Hall Jr. did a nice job. The defensive back, he's been like the quarterback of the defense for Coach Thompson. And... Holding, number 24 on defense. 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. And that was what I was afraid to see, though. It, as Matt, it was, very, it was overall pretty good coverage, but he did have the hands on the jersey quite a bit. And, you know, it was a good effort there, though, by Dayton, as you can see, though. Brumfield did a nice job with that throw and a nice leap and grab there by Robinson. And though, granted, yes, the ball popped out, but still. Pretty easy call, though, looking at that replay. And that's the same look the back judge had. And Robinson couldn't hang on. Hall, he's an impressive guy. He's the quarterback of this defense, played last year with Philadelphia, the Yellow Jackets. So they have a guy back there who knows what he's doing. And you know, that time he got flagged, but you know what? Better to get flagged than give up the big play. Brumfield, by the way. Nice throw. Man in motion. That's the veteran, Alberti. And uh, not a big gain up the middle. Guillaume was thrown down. And it looked like the tackle made by Eddie McClam, a guy that was with the Eagles in training camp this year. Good tackle, but I tell you, I was watching number 95, Demarcus Johnson, the right tackle there for uh, the for Dayton, and he's a big guy. And though you saw some pretty good speed and athleticism from the Lehigh Valley defensive line, but as long as Dayton gets that good first step off the snap, Lehigh Valley could be in for a tough day. It's Tommy Domer. Over, it'll be a nice little matchup between those two. Alberti in motion, 
A keeper with a flag thrown. Brumfield shifty has nowhere to go and eventually gets upended at the line of scrimmage. See, I think Tommy Dover and company, they heard me because right then and there, they jumped right through and did what they needed to do, but already another flag. And Josh Bradley, a rookie, had the Illegal tackle. defense, stunning five-yard penalty, automatic first down. So a stunning penalty, automatic first down, and the Dayton Wolfpack drive continues. That's the first illegal defense play against Lehigh Valley here today. But, you know, for Brumfield, if he has no time to throw, it's going to be a long afternoon. And, you know, I think for Coach Thompson, he understands the importance of having these guys play good defense. All new faces in the secondary. You don't necessarily get the sacks at this level, but you want to disrupt the timing of the plays going on. 2.04 and counting. Brumfield has Guillaume to his left. Man in motion is the veteran, Alberti. And Brumfield looking. Heavy pressure. And he gets rid of it, throws it away, and he was nearly sacked. All kinds of pressure coming by the Steelhawks. And eventually the hit was delivered by... Who was that? Was that Dover again? It was Dover. No, it was Eddie McClam, and he has had a very big defensive series so far. No, Eddie McClam's done a very nice job. And, you know, for Brumfield, though, got to give him some credit, even despite getting it there, getting rid of it at the last moment, but still doing so. And, you know, for that offensive line, they need to do a better job of protecting up front. And for the Steelhawks here, they're doing a pretty good job defensively, even despite that defensive foul against them, as we see already with Josh Bradley and Eddie McClam, those two guys up front. Dover was in on the hurry, too. He broke free. So Dover and McClam getting pressure. And you've got a second down. Second and 10 from the 13-yard line. And there's an easy call to make. I tell you what, Brian Robinson, he was nearly across the, the, the uh, Tillman Street Bridge on Union Avenue by the time the ball got snapped. Hey, Robinson's so fast, <laughs> but already, as you see, we're seeing some early going here. And you know that false start's going to move, the, or offsides, is going to move them back. The so a and a 10-yard penalty to boot, Matt. And mm -hmm. you know, we're seeing Dayton going backwards when you know they had a, not too long ago had a chance to get forward. Robinson went to southwestern Oklahoma, was actually cut late by the Columbia Lions, one of those guys that has come here to date with a chip on his shoulder. And he's a guy that can really go get it. They said, you throw the ball up, he'll get there. That's not his problem. He has a blazing set of legs. And he's again 30 yards downfield before the snap. Ball start. So we see two, a full start call here. Line before the snap, 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. And with the full start, though, to me, and I understand that Dayton has not played all that much together, but you have to get it in line here. The communication needs to be solved out quickly because you're within striking distance. You're only down by two points, the Wolfpack are. And, you know, you score a touchdown here, you get a, you get a field goal here, you're ahead. So, you know, for the Wolfpack, they need to clear this up because now they have a long way to go. This time he was downfield legally. They'll throw it to him. Robinson underthrown and intercepted. Picked off and getting up and making some moves right now. You see Oliver Jr. And another costly mistake by the Wolfpack. Nice job by the Wolfpack getting that interception. Eddie and Davis, yeah, Eddie Davis the third getting the pick there. And Eddie Davis, you know, he read that the entire way. And I almost don't blame Brumfield all too often because Look, he had to make a play. And, you know, at that point, you were hoping that your receiver needed to make some better separation. Now, it could have been a better throw, taking a look at the replay. But for Brian Robinson there, you know, it was tough, you know, because Brumfield threw into double coverage. So, but a great break here for the Steelhawks. Fans here are going to love Eddie Davis the third who just got that interception. He just finished up his season playing for Rowan. Still enrolled as a student. But he's playing. He's still playing football. And here he is, a youngster, one of the younger guys in the league, getting a big interception to take us to the end of the first quarter. So a wild and wacky start. The game started to slow down a little bit, but a lot of action early on. Opening day 2017 in the NAL. And after one, Steelhawks 14 and Wolfpack 12.
It was dope. 58. You're yeah. talking about when we were, picked it up and ran it in? No, he recovered it. Yeah. Highlight, that was when Joe Kuntz ripped out the ball. Kuntz had a very big first quarter. And so Kuntz got it to Dover. He scooped it up the turf. And then they weren't done. Now, this was the one drawback here in the first quarter. Not only was the fumble one that I'm sure Chris Thompson wouldn't prefer, but worse, Mayorga left injured. But his defense has stood tall. A pick brought us to the end of the first quarter. That pick made by Eddie Davis III. And through one, Mikey Ventola. We've got a 14-12 Steelhawk lead. You know, despite a lot of ups and downs, the Steelhawks here leading by two, and we've seen a bit of more fluidity from them on the offensive side you know for Dayton they've had a couple of breaks their way early that's why they have their 12 points here at this point but for the Steelhawks I'm sure they like to play more clean type football here in this second quarter but I think that first quarter Matt all right it's the, it's the season opener we're working out the cobwebs here a little bit but I think now this second quarter here for both teams it's going to be a telltale sign how the rest of the game is going to go so but right now too for Dayton they need to make a stop defensively because after we saw from their last <laughs> offensive possession didn't turn out too well as uh jeez oh, we're seeing some uh oh my fun fan, or, fan interaction there on the field <laughs> driver change oh it's a big truck I'll give her I'll give her the benefit of the doubt that's a big truck but boy you got to size that you got to square that thing up you know take out a dasher board down there you wouldn't catch me driving one of those things. I joke around. You know, I say <laughs> to you, I would love to be able to drive one of those things around. But can you imagine me driving, like, downtown Allentown, smaller roads and all kinds of traffic and parked cars? I would just be hitting parked cars all the time. Like Godzilla <laughs> walking through New York City, me driving the big truck. And that's the way we have seen some of the runs from the fullbacks. My argument before the injury kind of rumbled that same way and with him out you're going to see more of Wiry's Bradley and speaking of Godzilla that's his nickname and he runs like a bulldozer he's in the backfield now for the Steelhawks behind the quarterback or beside the quarterback Warren Smith Jr. had some experience at higher levels and now he's really going to have to pick it up because you know, for Coach Thompson, they like to use the pass to help set up the run. Oliver Jr. in motion and targeted on the deep slant. He's got it all the way down inside the five-yard line. What a throw by Warren Smith Jr. What a throw, and Warren Oliver Jr. did not even have to break stride. He didn't have to stop. He didn't have to pick up speed. It was a perfect play there by the Steelhawks, and that was a big play needed by the birds here from Lehigh Valley. Isaac Alford eventually pushed him into the dashers, but this a long pass to a guy also from Rowan, another one of the products of Rowan University on this team. And it was a touchdown saving push by Alford, but a big link up there. Now they're inside the five, they throw one out in the flat. It is caught by Renford, the all time Steelhawks leading receiver is in for the touchdown. Two big plays, and here's a touchdown for the Steelhawks. And catching Dayton a little off guard there, but the athleticism for Renford allowing Lehigh Valley to jump ahead here by eight. Two plays, about one minute in time, and they go nearly the length of the football field, and for Renford, that is his 46th career touchdown pass. I mentioned he's the all-time leading Steelhawk receiver. At 14 touchdown grabs a year ago, he's got one here in 2017 to see Steelhawk come onto the field to make sure they have eight. Hotelling, again, perfect. And the Steelhawks jump back in front by nine at 21-12, a very impressive couple of plays by the offense. Oh, you saw some good plays. Warren Smith Jr. with a beautiful throw and a couple good throws. I mean, obviously that second throw there on the on the outside and you know for Smith it was just a quick turn and a quick throw out there into the flat and you had to see the leap in by Renford so you know right now the Steelhawks that was a good answer especially after Dayton you know having a little control earlier on in that first quarter so but for now the Steelhawks if they can make a play here defensively Matt and then get another score it could really be turned into a tough afternoon here for Dayton. Renford 
gets the touchdown. But you know what impressed me watching the replay? Warren Oliver Jr., who had the long catch to set them up inside the five-yard line, delivered the big block that was able to allow Renford to turn the corner and get in the end zone on that pitch play. And so give Oliver credit. You love a receiver who can catch and get open, et cetera. But to be a complete receiver, you've got a block. And that's exactly what Warren Oliver Jr. did on that touchdown toss. Have to do the little things. And you do the little things well. It allows you to keep your job. And then by doing the little things right, it can allow you to elevate your game as well. So right now here for Lehigh Valley, they are starting to do the little things right. They're now waiting for uh, this kickoff to get underway as uh, Hotelinga having some fun with the fans out front. Well, this is, you know, kind of compared to the NFL, this is what minor league baseball is. The baseball and the sports we know, but the interaction between the players and fans is sensational here at the PPL Center. And Hotelling will kick it off. Back deep is the speedster Brian Robinson. Nine-point game here, early second quarter. Another strong kick. Again, shy of the deuce. But Totelling is not allowing Brian Robinson any opportunity to show off those Blazers. And that's something that if Lehigh Valley wins this game today, for Coach Thompson and their staff, they can put a feather in their cap knowing that they did not allow him to really return any type of kickoffs because if he does and he gets a couple of steps on any of those Steelhawks defenders, he's going to take it all the way to the house. Eddie Davis the third had an interception earlier, the first of his arena career. For more on Davis, let's have Christy Fulkerson rejoin us. Well, guys, the defensive back core is kind of where there were question marks during the preseason, and that's kind of been the opposite from the last couple of years. In preseason camp, the offense had more veterans, more returners, so that click, that was shining early on. It was the defense that was a little bit slower to come along. This DB core last year had 18 interceptions in the regular season, 24 total with those two playoff games. Nobody back from last year on the active roster. Eddie Davis, the only rookie, but he was someone that Coach Thompson pointed to as a guy that had the whole package, of course, a New Jersey native played at Rowan. He was all conference there, had four picks in his senior season, but a guy that really has adapted well, and they've needed him to come up big again as just that rookie, the only rookie in that DB core this season, guys. Thank you, Christy. You get a look there at uh, Davis, and uh, they have held Brumfield to two of five passing, and meanwhile, Guillaume twisting and turning managed just three yards. He's now seven for 10. They've done a very good job in corralling the offense so far. Brumfield under heavy pressure, turns the corner, spins and nearly picks up a first down all the way down to the 21 yard line before being upended by Eddie McClam. That's why I've been mentioning Brumfield's name quite a bit here today because he may have to take this game into his hands and if he can't do it via his arm, he needs to do it via his legs and right there showcasing his athleticism and helping at least make it a much more manageable third down. Third and a short yard. Keep an eye on the personal trainer, Sam Guillaume, a guy that eats healthy, stays in shape, absolutely solid, versatile back. He's a fitness model. I mean, this guy can really go. And he's got the first down. Plunges ahead for five. Not a dancer, not a shifty guy, but he's a straightforward runner. And there he's got enough to move the chains. So supporting of the Red Sea. Nice job blocking up front there, Matt. And, you know, for Dayton, taking it a down at a time. Only down here by essentially a score. And, you know, it's if you're getting to the point here for Dayton, you'd score here. I mean, you're still in the game, but you get a chance to get right back into it where you're neck and neck with Lehigh Valley. 10.41 to go before the half. Another tackle, by the way, by Kuntz. And Guillaume dragged down. Terrific job. Pair of Steelhawks making the play. Kuntz, of course, was in on. He's in on everything defensively. And Josh Bradley also getting credit for the tackle as well. Joe Kuntz, he's had a nice day so far. And it's nice hearing his name mentioned a few times. So, you know, that defensive line, they've Already been busy quite a bit because of this bruising running attack here by Dayton. And with the hair, reminds me of Clay Matthews when he was in his prime for Green Bay. I mean, he's playing in that middle linebacker position. He's tracking down guys. He's all over the football field. I'm glad I'm up here. Robinson in motion. Stops, gets the quick hitch. Cuts it back up. Very close to a first down inside the seven-yard line. It'll probably be about a yard shy. Don't need the home run threat every time. Just a quick little comeback route there by... Robinson 
And, you know, for Robinson, did a nice job avoiding a tackle there. And Who's on the bottom of the screen? Who, again, is there to make the tackle? I'll give you one guess. There's Coops. There he is. Boy, what a player he has been. Montclair State product. Get a look at Coots. Aubrey in motion. Guillaume looks like he's got the first down as he burrows his way inside the five-yard line. And now we're seeing good communication here by Dayton. We are seeing a very nice fluid drive here, but now Dayton needs to punch it in here. But for the Steelhawks, they need to try to make a play here defensively. And, you know, they've had Dayton commit turnovers already. They need to go back to the turnover. Alvarez in on the tackle. You know, we talked earlier, Chris Thompson so excited to have both Alvarez and Coots playing together at the same time. Remember Alvarez last year left uh, for half the season to play with the Philadelphia Soul. Three seasons, though, in all as a member of the Steelhawks. Number 12, one of your two starting linebackers. First down inside the five. Brumfield under duress, he spun down for a sack. And on cue, it's Alvarez. Alvarez was looking to try to be that guy to make a big play, and there it is. So all that momentum by Dayton now taking a big step back, but Alvarez, I mean, look, he gets untouched. <laughs> he blows right by Guillaume and gets a chance to make the tackle. Nice job there by Alvarez. Alvarez, according to his coaches, what makes him so good? Well, he's aggressive, he's physical, and he's not afraid to get after the quarterback. We saw all of that right there. Spun, uh, spun down Brumfield, and here we go again. Remember last time we saw the Wolfpack drive. It was kind of a bend but don't break, and then they got marched backwards 20 yards on penalties, and here they are going backwards again. That one lost about seven, and that looks like we may have a timeout. Timeout. We do. Wolfpack. First All right, so with this timeout, the first taken by Dayton, we will break aside. 21 12 Steelhawks. More action of NAL football coming up after a break here on TV2 Sports. Matt Province and Mike Ventola with you here on a Sunday afternoon. Opener for the Steelhawks, who went 8-3, made their fifth consecutive postseason appearance a year ago. Carl Graber, our statistician, and uh, you can look at what we have seen on the, the paper here. Warren Smith Jr., 4-4 four for four for 105 yards. Couple of touchdowns, great start for one of the two quarterbacks here for the Steelhawks. Had a big pass earlier. They're going up top. And it's knocked away. Terrific defense by the Steelhawks on a pass that was intended for Kevin McFadden, broken up by Eddie Davis III. Most fans nowadays enjoy big plays on offense. I am in the minority. I love a big play on defense. And Eddie Davis there did a nice job positioning himself, timing that throw perfectly, swatting it down, and simply saying, this is my area. Uh, you and I have both done a little moonlighting, some volleyball at Lafayette College. Right? That's a good spike. Absolutely. Threw that thing out. down. <laughs> and they went for McFadden, by the way. He's their jump ball guy, 6'5", 235, a guy that played in the AFL, two for Mississippi prior in his career, and they tried him. This time it's Robinson in motion. Brumfield looking, heavy pressure. Under duress, just throws it away. And again, pressure put on. This time the pressure was thrown on by Dover, who had a touchdown earlier today. Tommy Dover, he looked like he wanted to match up there, Eddie Davis, and he did just that, so. But going back to what we just said a little bit ago, Matt, Dayton just continuing to go backwards. They showed some big steps forward. It's one of those take a step forward, take three steps back here. So, you know, for Dayton right now, this is going to be a big play coming up here. Fourth and goal. They have, again, been knocked backwards after finding their way inside the five-yard line. 
Now the ball sits at the 13, and they will try for the field goal, and the veteran James Terry out there. And Terry was saying the key is, you know, they haven't practiced together. Getting the snaps and the holds down is something that you take for granted a lot of times, and this is going to be a little bit of a work in progress here for the Wolfpack. They get it down. There is a flag. The kick is up. It is no good. Wide left, but there is a flag down, and so is the kicker. The veteran James Terry lies face first on the black turf. Sadly, we've seen too many guys take a fall down, and hopefully Terry's okay because then you wonder what is the kicking situation going to be like. Talked with Terry for a while earlier today. Illegal formation on the offense with a wide out spread offense. Personal foul, roughing the kicker on the defense. Wow. Those penalties are offset. We play fourth down. So you get the offsetting penalty as another opportunity, but now you have to wonder how is their kicker, James Terry, and if Terry's unable to go, who else can kick on this team? Well, that's where... Yeah. That's what you see. Yeah, that wouldn't be in the NFL. Obviously, that would not be the instance. And in the NAL, it's the same thing. That 15-yard personal foul trumps the five-yard penalty, and it's a first down for the Wolfpack. And, you know, for James Terry, can I be honest with you? If the Wolfpack have got a key guy... It's going to be James Terry. It seems like he is going to be like the the rally guy. He's going to be the guy on the sideline. Let's go, guys. Let's go. But you know what? For a team that's tr trying to find their identity a little bit, he could be that guy. Bradley is livid. And I tell you what, there probably was a little acting job. James Terry, who was uh, very sociable with us earlier, it wouldn't surprise me if he used that veteran savvy of playing in arena football for 16 seasons now as he's now reached the 40 plateau in uh, the age department, and he pulled out some of that savvy there. He was making some jokes about how, how, you know, even though he's still a young man, but how as old as he is, that guys, his teammates were very, very young, you know what I mean, years ago. So it's, uh, it's great getting a chance to talk to him earlier today. Here's Guillaume, flags again, and another false start. False start, number 70 on offense. That will be a 10-yard penalty as we're in the bonus situation. Repeat first down. So Kohlheim with the bonus situation now, a 10-yard penalty, and with 5.22 and ticking here in the second quarter, again, you're seeing that Steelhawks bend, but don't break defense. No, and, you know, for Lehigh Valley, they're doing exactly what they need to do here at this point, but for the Wolfpack, they're still going backward, and you know, now here from the 17-yard line, they need to get into the end zone, and... They need to do so quickly, otherwise you wonder what their confidence level will be like. Penalties mounting up for the Wolf Pack, who, although they carry the Dayton name, are based out of Atlanta. A traveling team plays all its games on the roads this season. Brumfield looking, still serving, finds a man who broke open. Touchdown! It's caught! And that is grabbed by the savvy veteran McFadden. Needed a play, and there it was as Dayton needed to get into the end zone. Brumfield did a nice job with that throw, but currently right now as you see him down on the field, as it looks like play will stop here as Brumfield gets helped up, but it was not the best snap, but still did a nice job, Brumfield, of moving to his left, and he threw across his body a little bit, but a simple just beating of the defensive back, and, you know, for McFadden, help getting the Wolfpack within three. Well, you hope that Brumfield is okay. He'll be looked at off to the side by the trainer. I tell you what, his first route was to get Robinson on a corner route, and that was not there. You could see him looking on that replay towards Robinson, looked back over the field, good job surveying, and he found McFadden who broke free behind Ume. And McFadden, the former AFL two player with Mississippi, the 6'5 big target, was able to make the grab. And we have a new QB in the game. The kicker was dinged up. Now we get the second quarter back. This is Moreland. Moreland's throw batted away. And it looked like the breakup there was attributed to Ume. Yep, that was Ume. So they get the six points. And with 4.18 to go, Mike, you got a 21-18 game. So the Wolf Pack have already done what they could here to get it back into where this game being competitive, but now Lehigh Valley looking to answer back. So even as well as the Steelhawks have played here, the Wolf 
pack have done enough to just stay close, stay there, and, you know, but I'm sure for the Steelhawks, they gotta be looking and saying, you know what, despite a lot of their inconsistencies on that side of the field, they have helped, they have made that play when necessary. And, you know, for the Steelhawks, especially now with 4.18 to go in the second here, you wonder if they're gonna look to try to put together a little bit of a drive. You know, I know it's easy here to get the home run threat map, but, you know, it's gonna be, a lot's gonna be predicated on how this return is gonna be here by Brandon Renford. Well, we harped on the fact that it was basically a lot of penalties early on on Dayton, but it was this penalty that might be the biggest of the game. A missed field goal try. You can see there just a little contact as it looked like Bradley went to turn and he knocked down the kicker who played it beautifully, sold it for the penalty, and then you get the touchdown to McFadden. Well, what a great look. Throwing one way, as you talked about it, Mike, going across his body to find his second target in McFadden. So now Terry will look to kick this off. And you know what, for Matt, you know, watching Terry's kickoffs today, his first one did not go as far as one would have thought, but then his second kickoff, he kicked a bouncer, so it'll be interesting to see how he's gonna look to kick this one off. That's not the strongest leg at this point of his career. Very good accuracy, which is something obviously you want from your field goal kickers. He's been around, great athlete. Played at Clark years ago, and he will squib it. From the eight, through the middle, an opening! And all the way for the touchdown. Oh my, it parted like the Red Sea and Trolley, the rookie from Maris takes it house. Guess that takes away from what I thought about a long sustaining drive. I mean, look, if the Red <laughs> Sea's gonna park there at that point, Matt, take it to the house. And the Steelhawks do just that. So nice job there by Matt Trolley, but more importantly, nice job blocking up front. Special teams meltdown here for the Wolf Pack. Wide open. I don't think Charlie's ever been compared to Moses before, but a guy that was uh, a team leader at Marist. Led the Marist uh, football team in receptions three consecutive years. Had 12 touchdowns collegiately. And now Hotelling knocks another one through again. And the Steelhawks lead has surged to 10. And that's the break that the Steelhawks are looking for here and I'm sure if they make a stop defensively get another score then you know things could really start to get ugly here but as we've seen before Dayton you know now we're gonna get a chance to see him back on offense with Brownfield and or Brumfield rather and company they've had they've made some nice plays but Lehigh Valley they have that bend don't break type defense and let's see if they can now make a play on the defensive side and tough really to see how this Wolfpack defense will play because you had a missed tackle lead for a very long touchdown that went all but five yards the length of the field, a 45-yard hookup for their first score. You had the fumble, which was in a facet of a defensive meltdown. It was when the offense was on the field that led to a touchdown, the scoop and score for the Steelhawks. Now you get a touchdown on a special teams play. So the defense has allowed two touchdowns. One of them was on a missed tackle, but they haven't been out there really to, to get their cohesive nature going because they haven't been on the field all that much. No, not at all, and I'm sure for Coach Ray and his staff, they'd like to see that happen at some point, you know, because, you know, obviously you come into this game, you want to win, but you also at this point as well want to see the Wolfpack and that is, is after you see the opening kickoff, just go left. But, you know, you want to see them try to work on things, try to get the little things right. And, you know, you know, if you come out with a victory, then obviously then that's gravy here at this point. Hoteling trying to nail some deuces. And we talk about the new league, the NAL, the National Arena League. There are your eight teams. Now, we've already had a couple of games this weekend. Jacksonville, which, talking to both coaches, is as talented a team in terms of the roster makeup as any. High County Grizzlies also getting a W. Columbia and Georgia losing. And then, of course, in the middle of the teams that haven't played, Steelhawks, this Wolfpack team, the Monterey Steel. Yes, in Monterey, Mexico. It'll be interesting to see the Dayton Wolfpack Road Warrior team make its way to Monterey as if they're not going to travel enough by the time the year is over. And the Corpus Christi Rage in Texas, the eighth of the new eight-member NAL. Hopefully uh, some stability for the Lehigh Valley Steelhawks moving forward. That's why the Steelhawks, and as I don't think anybody was set. And another false start by the offense. Have to get set out there. False start, offense. 
entire team was not set prior to the snap. They're in bonus situation. That'll be a 10 yard penalty. First down. And in the bonus time here, now it's a 10 yard penalty. And hey, keep in mind, Brumfield is not in. Remember, on that touchdown pass, he was helped off the field. And evidently, uh, at least not yet, he's unable to return. So you're going to get a look now at James Moreland, a guy that also plays defensive back. And, you know, the two guys have similar styles. Moreland might not have the same arm strength, but he has more experience in arena football. And they may need that experience now being down by 10. Robinson in motion. Underthrown as it was late on the delivery there by Moreland. And the duress was Eddie McClam coming through and forcing the errant throw. And already you were hoping for Brumfield to start making a rapport with his receivers. Now you have to start all yeah. the way back from the beginning that's here, a tough Matt. Break. And yeah. it's, it is a tough break for Dayton. And that's where now, you know, for Dayton, this is going to be another work in progress. Brumfield, 4 of 10, 55 yards, had two touchdown tosses and threw a pick. That was the first interception in the Steelhawk career of the Rowan product, Eddie Davis III. Guillaume, nowhere to go, and he stood up by Kuntz, who leads the charge again. Oh, he's all over the place. Great job defensively there by the Steelhawks, but a poor handoff there by Moreland. And, you know, you saw a little miscommunication there with Moreland and Guillaume, and that is where now that's got to get cleaned up. Look at Dover follow the play, too. He got in. Also, Eddie Davis the third. Some gang tackling here for Chris Thompson, Steelhawk defense. Of course, the uh, defensive coordinator, Bob Kohler, pleased to see how Kuntz is playing. Meanwhile, Guillaume, just 11 rushes for 22 yards. He's been under heavy duress all afternoon. Well, the Lehigh Valley, as we see another <laughs> false start. I tell you what, Robinson's going to have his wind sprints done by the end of today. Ball start on the offense, half the distance to goal, third down. And, you know, not only with them potentially him having his wind sprints, but, you know, this is once again, as we see Coach Ray here, and as he is, you know, trying to get these guys to playing together and playing in continuity here a little bit, and that's where, you know, this more experienced quarterback here in Moreland, this is where he needs to take command of the offense, get the guys together and say, look, one play at a time here. We have a minute That's left. A one minute warning. One minute timing rules are in effect. It's now here with the minute warning. Minute now warning. we're going to see if Dayton could, play. as we see a timeout here, that we're going to see Moreland and company, if they can try to put together a drive and get a score. So timeout here. Steelhawks hitting 28-18. A minute to go. There is Chris Thompson. Talked about his acumen here earlier. 60 six years 34 wins and he's excited about this season and he's really hoping again that the NAL becomes a stable home and he's got a good crew with him Bob Kohler I mentioned earlier offensive line special teams coach Ken Miller defensive line coach Todd Shimko one thing too we talked about him uh, we'll talk about with him was having Lori Locust in her first year they have a female linebacker coach she knows her stuff She's well respected by the guys, and she's making a big impact. And I can tell you how you know. Look at the way Kuntz and Alvarez have played today. Well, that's linebacker coach Lori Locust spinning her magic wand with this defense. I tell you, she is, she has done her homework on Dayton. She has done a very nice job getting these guys prepared. And you know what? It's great to see. And you know, always a lot of, of the publicity, a lot of the credit always goes to the head coach. But he really talked a lot about Lori as well as all the other assistant coaches as well too so the, each assistant coach they have their units prepared they have their units ready to go and you know for her it, as she had a chance to go you know being a defensive line offensive line and a linebacker coach type experience it's a buddy Ryan Carell taking in the game here today decent crowd here at PPL Center and either he knows he's on because he's watching on his phone, or he just got a cool text from somebody. Maybe a good picture, maybe some cool snap, snap talk. What do they call it? Snap the Twitter. Now. Snapchat. Yeah. Snapchat. Yeah. His mom's obviously watching the game, so uh, we'll say he was doing his homework. He was yes. researching, Absolutely. researching for tomorrow's day of school. <laughs> During you know time stoppages. That's of course, <laughs> absolutely. Robinson gets the head start, and the throw is intended for him. It's intercepted again. It's Davis the third. He's got his second pick. 
And he dances away across midfield before being banged down inside the 25-yard line. The tackle made by Rocky Carlisle, but how about the work of this man, Eddie Davis the third? Eddie Davis, he may get himself a game ball at the end of the day when it's all said and done. You know, you see Moreland shifting to his left, and he read that the entire way, Davis, and did a nice job making a couple of cuts and then then, then felt the presence of Vincent Bridges there at the end, so he took that ball in, making sure it didn't pop out. He's got Eddie Davis eyes, right? Eddie Davis eyes? Yes. Well, <laughs> two picks. He's been very impressive in his first game here. The youngster from Rowan. And he sets up the Steel Hawks with a chance to build upon a game-high 10-point lead with still 49 seconds to go before the halftime. Man in motion, it's up the middle. It's the big man, Godzilla, rumbling, bumbling all the way down to the 10-yard line. That's why Reese Bradley. Good luck trying to tackle him one-on-one -on -one, because he just ran through a couple of guys and he is a big-time bruiser. So after Mayorga right now being lost due to injury, he's going to be relied upon quite a bit because one thing that they like to do, Lehigh Valley, is they like to throw first to set up the run. They like that old-school type, type of football. For Bradley, a guy that last year played with both the sole and the Amarillo Venom of the CIF, he had 600 yards rushing last year, stays upright for a couple of extra yards here and gets inside the 10. Give him four and a timeout for the Steelhawks. Eventually the tackle made by Moulton. Well, now, Matt, seven seconds here as we get a chance to take a look at the replay and you see him trying to work the outside. But with seven seconds here and one timeout left, it could be tough for Lehigh Valley in trying to get a second play. So my guess is here, they would look to try to get to the end zone via the air. When they were down here earlier, they threw one into the flat for their all-time leading receiver, Brandon Renford. It was well blocked. Renford goes behind a couple of receivers. So keep in mind, maybe you're looking at that same play, same design. Trips all lined up up top, and now we get a timeout for Dayton as they want to talk it over, seeing how the Steelhawks set up offensively. It's a good timeout by Coach Marcus Ray, and you know you just want to make sure that your defense knows exactly what they need to do out there, make sure all the assignments are incorrectly. So, you know, but for Lehigh Valley here, I think they have a heads-up advantage because to me, I would actually throw out that same formation, even though. Um, Dayton had a chance to take a look at it already because one thing we've seen already with Lehigh Valley is that they've had a heads up on these one-on-one -on -one matchups. Well, we have a chance. We've talked about penalties being a big part of the game. Six on the Wolfpack, three on the Steelhawks. 50 yards and penalties as well for this first-year Dayton team. Arrived again after 10.30 last night. They wanted to get to the valley in time for dinner, but uh, between rain and just traffic and just a long ride, some stoppages along the way, it was a late night. Smith under center, sends his man in motion. That's Renford. He goes the other way and it is caught. Touchdown, Darius Prince. And there is a flag down. Nice throw and nice catch by the Steel Hawks, but we'll see. What this split, what the penalty will be, but it looks like it's going against Dayton, Matt. Illegal defense. It is an that illegal defense call. That penalty is declined. He's on a plate, touchdown. We'll have one on time down for the extra point. Prince came on strong last year, had an unbelievable rookie season. He actually led the Steelhawks in receiving 65 catches, 785 yards, and 16 touchdowns a year ago. And he's got one here. Got banged up against the boards and held on. Hotelling gets it through again. But there is a flag down. And we have seen a bulk of these flags in the special teams units. Illegal defense. Illegal defense again. Penalties declined, resulting in a good try. Good finish there for the Steelhawks, Madden. Ending on that first half on a very high note. Let's get a look at the highlight here because this has been a heck of a first half for Warren Smith Jr. Surveys, finds his man over the middle, and Prince is in the end zone. Has Smith Jr. had an incomplete yet? He has been unbelievable. So as we saw there, a nice job by 
The Steelhawks, though, exactly with seven seconds, dialing up the perfect play. So, and that's momentum they take right into the locker room. And right now, if I were a Steelhawks fan, I'm feeling very good about how well they've played here, especially in the second quarter. Smith, five for five, 111 yards and three touchdowns. 35-18 Steelhawks. We're at the half at the PPL Center in Allentown. Matt Province, Mike Ventola with you here on TV2 Sports. Great job by our whole team today bringing you this action of the opening day for the Steelhawks in the newly formed NAL. A couple of touchdowns for Darius Prince, a perfect first half for quarterback Warren Smith Jr. And despite that crazy start we had today, Mike, I think that Chris Thompson now, despite the injury to one of his key players in Mayorga, has got to be pretty pleased the way his team's played. Absolutely, because you look at the quarterback position, Warren Smith Jr. had a perfect half. He did exactly what he needed to do on offense. But to me, as impressive as he was, Matt, that defense stepped up big in big moments between Tommy Dover and, of course, Joe Koontz and company. No doubt about it, and we knew the defense was more a bit of a work in progress with some new faces in the secondary. One of them, Eddie Davis III, in his first game as a Steelhawk, had two interceptions in the first half, also had a key breakup. He has had a terrific first 30 minutes of play. Now we talk about the newly formed NAL, what this means for the Steelhawks, and who better to get to the source of this year and this new allegiance than Christy Fulkerson, who now stands right beside the owner here in Mike Clark. That's right. Thanks, Matt. I am joined by Glenn Clark. And, and let's start with that new league this season. Exciting time for this franchise, year number seven. But just talk about the National Arena League and, and why it's a great fit for the Steelhawks. Okay. What, what we've done, uh, we're a, a second-tier league in that uh, we're not the AFL. We're one league below. And what we did was find other owners that have the same mindset as us. And the other owners have to have the uh, financial responsibility, put up a letter of credit, 
Uh, we've had some difficulties in the past with teams kind of canceling out at the last minute, and we just trying to professionalize the whole area of minor league arena football. And uh, my son Michael, very instrumental in finding some of these other teams and and taking some of the best practices of the leagues we've been in before. And our new league, we think uh, we're very very excited about it. In fact. I'm hearing guys talking in back of me tonight, and, and here they're going to be a new franchise next year. They're from, they're from New Jersey. And uh, so it's, it's, we'll probably have uh, four new teams next year, but this year we've got a great uh, a group. Most of the teams we're going to play are in the south, and uh, so we'll be traveling a little bit to the south. But as far as our arena here goes, we'll have six home games, and we're real excited about it. Eight different teams across six different states, plus Mexico. This this league really expanding across the country. But what does it do for arena football to, to take it to another level of competition? Because we're going to be seeing some really good teams. Jacksonville down from the AFL, where they've played for six seasons in now the NAL with you guys. Yeah, I hate to I hate to say it, but the AFL model is a very expensive model. Okay, they they pay their players a lot of money. It's going bankrupt two or three times. They've remade themselves a few times. We love them. We partner with the Soul. We've promoted players up to them. We've got a one of our players, Joe Powell, is is, is actually signed with the NFL. Okay, he's a he's a Buffalo Bill. I mean, I can't, we couldn't be more proud of that. Okay, but but uh, our model is a, is a limited model. It's more like Texas Hold'em. Okay, so everybody gets the same amount of chips. You can pay the players the same amount of money. It's much more stable. So it really benefits you to have good coaching, good sponsors like you guys. We got free hats tonight because of Service Electric. We got Lehigh Valley Health Network, Capital Blue Cross, Embassy Bank. It's the community that makes our team happen, and it gives us the edge in a Texas Hold'em game. You mentioned Joe Powell, who's on an NFL roster. Dwayne Hollis, of course, won a championship with the Philadelphia Soul last season. How important is it to this organization, this franchise, to, to do that, to help these players grow and make it to the next level? It makes people want to come here, okay? There are some franchises that they get a good player, and they want to own that player. The way our contracts run, if you go to a higher league, we freely let you go. You can't go to the same level, but we freely let you go. We have 38 players that we promote at the higher levels, and that is probably our most, um, yeah, we don't really brag, but it's probably the most significant thing that, that uh, it tells us who we are, that the Lehigh Valley uh, Steelhawks have promoted so many players to other teams. And I know there are players that are wanting to come here because of the facility, because of the level of competition, and, and of course because of how well you guys do run this organization. But talk about your fans. You're number seven. How exciting is it to kick off another year here in the PPL Center? Well, I, I actually live in Westchester, PA. My son lives in Bethlehem, and, and the office for the team is in Bethlehem. But for me and my wife, we come up here, we get to see our season ticket holders, get to see you again. Last time I saw you, you looked a little different, okay? And uh, you're coming up here, and in back of you right now is a Liberty High School band. They look like the, look like, like the Queen Elizabeth's uh, Troop in the Colors kind of a thing. Just had 100 little girls uh, do a dance team uh, routine for the halftime. It's just so much fun to be part of the community. So for us, for me, I'm coming back to the Lehigh Valley to see the game. It's a thrill to see all our old friends again. But for my son, it's it's kind of a, my, my goodness, look at the celebration of seven years. We've been around, and we're, we're for real, and we're having a good time. Speaking of your son, we're, we think he's still awake, but wow, what a night it was for this crew because you weren't allowed to get into this building to start changing over to football until about 1 a.m. I mean, this this organization, some of these staff members running on fumes right now. Well, there's a hockey game last night, okay? And hockey is big here. It's at the Phantoms. And so we can't uh, start our, our preparation until they're done. They let them come in at 1 o'clock in the morning. My son, my daughter, staff, coaches, they pulled an all-nighter, putting the turf down, getting the dasher boards up. If you do a pan around here of the dasher boards, you've got 50 different businesses that, that sponsor us. We call them performance partners because they perform for us, we perform back for them, but uh, no one minds, okay? We, like, we look forward to staying up all night so that they can, they can uh, deliver the game today. We have a good start today. We, we've made a few mistakes, but we're going to win this game and we're going to be a real force in the league this year. For those people that have not yet made it out to a Steelhawks game in person, what do you want to say to them? Because it is affordable entertainment. I think season tickets starting around $48. I mean, this is a really great opportunity to see some good football, but also be entertained as a fan as well. I'll give, I'll give you a small hit, okay? I just watched uh, Manchester by the Sea on television, okay? Uh, actually, I rented it. And the Netflix rental was, yeah, I figured $10 or something like that. 
and I wasn't happy at the end of it. You, if you come to this game for eight dollars, you're going to have a great time. There's games, there's, there's fun. You're going to get a signature of your favorite player at the end of the game. Great food, great arena, a turf that uh, has our colors on it. See some of your friends in a band or in, 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 a, in a dance team. It's a, it's the best ten dollars you can spend. A great opportunity to get on the field after the game, of course, to meet the meet the players. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Glenn. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on another year. Good to be here. Thank you. All right, stay with us. We're going to have more from Steel Hawks football action here at the PPL Center coming up right after this, exclusively on TV2 Sports. Stay with us. Matt Province, Mike Ventola, our entire two crew here doing a great job. Of course, you can watch the game in high definition with all your service electric sporting events all throughout the course of the year. 502 for that HD of the Steelhawks and the Dayton Wolfpack as they play in week one of NAL football action. So first half, obviously, with the score, you could tell the Steelhawks got out in front. But it was kind of a crazy uh, set of circumstances to begin this game. First of all, you got a team coming up, traveling by bus through the night, got here. You have Lehigh uh, with the hockey, as you heard earlier. Couldn't turn the field over to one, and it started kind of like that. Let's get to how Lehigh was able to get itself on the scoreboard. Well, after a fumble recovery and a touchdown for Dayton, here was Warren Smith Jr. hitting Darius Prince for a 49-yard pass, catch, and touchdown. He had to break through a few tackles, but after that, you see a fumble, and it was Tommy Dover with a 21-yard fumble recovery, and the extra kick was good after that, so Tommy Dover coming up with a big play after that. Then you would see for the Steelhawks, Warren Smith Jr. finding Brandon Renford. They're out in the flat. So then after that, you would see Terry with that pooch kick, and the kickoff return by Matt Trialli for 42 yards and he takes it all the way for the touchdown. So after that kickoff return, you see a nice little pass and catch, leap up and grab there, Darius Prince again. So Darius Prince with a couple of touchdown receptions, Matt, as the Steelhawks getting a 35-18 lead. How about the Liberty High School band down there? The Grenadier band cranking it out, a couple of days removed from our uh, St. Patrick's Day celebration, they have the kilts, they have the bagpipes. Let's listen in to the Liberty High School Band.
All right, again, Liberty High School Grenadier Band performing at halftime. We'll take a break, come back, and look at the defense of the Steelhawks who lead 35-18 at the half on TV2 Sports. Province Mike Ventola with you. We're at the half. You can see the Steelhawks there leading by 17. More from the Liberty High School Grenadier Band as they perform at half. Province Mike Ventola, halftime here at the PPL Center, lovely facility in downtown Allentown, Pennsylvania, as we begin play in the inaugural NAL season. So far, so good, Mike, for the Steelhawks, who lead 35 18. Well, we've seen a lot from Lehigh Valley. They've done a very nice job, as you can especially take a look from a defensive standpoint and, you know, getting after Brumfield earlier today, you just see the defensive line getting after and then also too from a defensive back scenario with a couple interceptions today. And not only with a couple of interceptions, but you see even getting after the quarterback with a sack as well there, Chris Alvarez coming in at one point, but with Brumfield leaving due to injury, James Moreland coming in and Moreland and company running into a lot of trouble. The LMA in trouble as well, but another interception there. Eddie Davis third with his second of the day. So he, this defense for the Steelhawks, they've done a nice job. All right, statistics as you can see here, the passing yards dominated by the Steelhawks and the perfect play of starting quarterback Warren Smith Jr. connected on all five of his pass attempts, 111 yards. And uh, we saw the touchdown total. He had three of them, two to Prince, the other to the all-time leading receiver, Brandon Renford. They didn't have the ball a lot. Time of possession was dominated by the Wolfpack, but they kind of went back and forth. Six penalties for 50 yards, a big story there. Uh, right now, you do like the fact that the Wolfpack 
from the per perspective able to hang in there. They got a fumble and they've tried to rush it a little more. They're not having a ton of success. The key for me, Mike, is the health of their starting quarterback who's starting to get to rhythm before leaving with an injury. And that, of course, is Chris Brumfield. I thought Brumfield, as the quarter, as the second quarter went on, he was starting to pick it up. But then once James Moreland came in, then you really saw Dayton take a step back. So James Moreland really needs to have a strong second half. But as well, Eddie Davis the third, he's he had such a good first half. We'll see if he can carry some of that momentum in the second half. So, but uh, you know, for the Steelhawks, that time of possession goes to show you at times it may not mean all that much because hey, they're up ahead on the scoreboard and they definitely cashed in when they had to. One more interception to na match that last name. All right, let's go to, to the field. We have the queen of the coin toss, Christy Fulkerson standing by. Well, guys, I was able to catch up with both head coaches and the common feeling, as you might expect in week number one, game number one, a lot of mental errors for both of these teams. For Marcus Ray, of course, this is their first time in full pads. He said it's a confidence boost that we were able to get those six points right off the bat, knowing we can play at this level. But a lot of the mistakes, a lot of the reasons Steelhawks able to find the end zone, in his opinion, self-imposed problems. So he said he hopes they got their jitters out. Chris Brumfield, the quarterback, by the way, is OK, a little bit of an ankle injury he will be back to finish the second half he said the worst part about the first half for Dayton is that they make it a three point game then give up that kickoff return to give the Steelhawks an even bigger lead so a game of momentum he said they hope they can come out and get it back on their side for Chris Thompson he said it was very sloppy first half despite having a lead here at the break he too wants to see his team clean up a whole bunch of mistakes he said it has been hard to get into a rhythm offensively he thinks they only ran about 10 to 12 plays overall Still expect to see Ray Wagner at some point once they can get the offense on the field for an extending amount of time. Defensively, he said some good plays. Eddie Davis, the third, but also a lot of inconsistencies. So, again, you might expect that in week number one, but both of these teams looking for improvement in the third and fourth quarters, guys. Well, Christy, we thank you very much. Remember, breaking the ice tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Get all your phantoms fix here as it's hosted down at Chickie and Pete's part of the PPL Center, and uh, you'll want to catch that up as the Phantoms making a run for postseason play, something that uh, would be a first. And uh, unlike that, you've got the Steelhawks who are trying to make it into the postseason for the sixth consecutive year. But Mike, one thing the Steelhawks have not yet done in their very successful franchise, host a playoff game. And that's something that is very much on the radar for Coach Thompson and his staff in this team. They want to bring a playoff game here to the PPL Center. And why not? You saw how excited the fans were in the first half. They're here. They're excited. They really want to see the Steelhawks try to get a win today. And, and you know, this could be a tough place for teams to come in and play. And, you know, you know, sports is very much within the bloodstream of a lot of these fans here in the Lehigh Valley. They love it. And, you know, for the Steelhawks, they feel like if they can get themselves a home game, they can bring a championship here to the Lehigh Valley. Now the question is, will there be more points in this game? Right now we're 35-18 at halftime with the second half just about to start. Steelhawks will be kicking off. Remember, they got the ball first to begin the game. Or will there be more points in, say, North Carolina, Arkansas, or Kansas, Michigan State, which is currently underway? My point being is buckle up at 35-18. We're on pace to rival the excitement and the scoring that you may have otherwise mistakenly stayed home to watch, unless of course you're watching this game from your couch in high definition on TV2 Sports. Hoteling strong leg has come close to the deuce a couple of times, and it seems like he's always left, right? He's left again, and uh, certainly has the booming leg. 20 yard line will be where the Wolf Pack sets up shop in the second half. They do not want Brian Robinson to return any kickoff, so whether it goes left, whether it goes right, or if one of these days they can get it to go through the uprights, um, they are just going to make sure Robinson does not return an opening kickoff. And let's see, because we just heard from Christy, the thought from the coaching staff is that Brumfield would be in, and there he is, putting the helmet back on. And uh, that's a big sign for the Wolf Pack, which was competitive, very competitive in the first half, especially when you consider the fact that they have not had the training camp that you would normally expect to have as a football team. And I think it's important to have Brumfield on, especially if he's ready not to take anything away from the experience of Moreland. But Brumfield is Dayton's guy, and he needs to be out there. Guillaume burrows ahead just two. They have not allowed Guillaume to get that momentum going. 
and it looked to me like you had the finishing hit by Coots again, but Eddie McClam has had a very good game on the defensive line, and he may have tripped up Guillaume to get things started. Uh, Eddie McClam, he has been a good supporting cast member to the likes of a Tommy Dover and a Joe Coons, so it's nice seeing him getting in there and getting after Guillaume. Guillaume stays in, man in motion is the speedster, and Robinson, they float one down, miscommunication, and nearly picked off, and Eddie Davis would have had his third. You know, for Brumfield, that was something that he should have either just thrown away or just try to tuck and run, but, you know, for him, he was just trying to make a play, realizing that his team is down by 17. They know they need to get into the end zone, but you don't need the home run threat every time, Matt, you know, for, you know, the Wolf, Wolf Pack. You've had some success running the football a little bit. Try to get yourself back into what makes it work for you. Third and long, call it nine. Robinson in motion, it goes to the flat. Good anticipation, and the pass broken up. Terrific job breaking on the ball by Dom Joseph, a product of UVA. I understand there is no punting here whatsoever, but I'm surprised that was the play call there. I would have expected something a little bit further downfield. You know, they still have some distance. They have nine yards to go here, so I'm surprised they would have called maybe an eight, nine, ten yard type play, but instead a two, three yard play, even if it's a catch. Okay, yeah, you're a little closer, but it's still a long distance. So they've got fourth and what is about a long eight. Robinson. Starts up, a play fake, now to the near side, looking for the home run ball, and that is knocked away. The intended receiver was Hicks, and there was Eddie Davis the third. and this guy is gonna become a household name here in the Valley by the time this game is over today. Absolutely, and you know, I think for the Steelhawks selling jerseys, you're gonna see a lot of number sevens in the stands here at the PPL Center, Matt. I mean, just, now, it was not the best thrown ball here, but look at him just yep. coming onto the, play there and you know for the receiver there he had no chance whatsoever as Hicks tried to do all he can to make sure it just didn't get intercepted at that point. Back out is the Steelhawk offense the one fullback who is healthy Wyrie's Bradley remember Mayorga started and he left due to injury and that looks like we got a either a false start or somebody jumped on the defensive side. Looked like it was a jump there on the defensive side by Darius Murphy Matt at least oh. that's what it looked like. That would be penalty number seven, which it appears it will be as they're beginning to mark the ball off. Mistakes like that, though. You're down by 17, and, you know, granted, yes, it's a shorter field here for the Steelhawks, but don't give them a shorter yeah. field. Yeah, though that's not a mistake based on not being together other than just a month. You're right. That's just, you know, watching the ball, watching the movement of the snap. Now Renford is in motion, gets a full head of steam. They throw it to him on a corner out. He catches the ball and gets out by about the two, maybe three, where he's banged to the rafters by Tyler Mickens. It was a nice job there by Renford, finding the hole there in the secondary and running a very nice route for Warren Smith Jr. He has been as efficient as he ever has been in his career, and he's really had himself a nice season opener. Beautiful. Perfect performance so far for the product of University of Maine, a black bear during his collegiate days. And uh, he will tuck it away. He's got a touchdown. Waltzes into the end zone. And then a late hit charged against Rocky Carlisle, I believe. And how about the afternoon turned in so far by Warren Smith Jr. And you talked about Warren Smith with his ability to run with his legs. Well, he did it right there, so didn't need the throw as you see the penalty go against the Wolfpack. Tell you what, we've got a great Halloween idea for Michael Davis. I mean, every time he comes onto our screen, I, I feel like George Bush is going to make the call. <laughs> <laughs> when you first looked at him, like, holy Toledo, what happened to Service Electric? Why do we have uh, the news on? <laughs> They've done a great job. It's always tough, the opener, you know, these guys a couple new rules, part of the NAL, and uh, they've done a great job so far. They've kept control on the game. They've been very busy today. Hotelling bangs the upright, and it goes uh, beyond the line of scrimmage, so the whistles will kill it there. The kick no good, and it's a 41-18 Steelhawk lead. So the Steelhawks here leading 41-18 as you see the touchdown here once again. 
Warren Smith, he sees the pressure and just takes it nice and easy into the end zone. And there was no excuse there for that late hit, but probably some frustration there. But right now, Warren Smith Jr. here, Matt, he has really been uh, the guy here for this Steelhawks offense. And now leading 41-18. If Dayton, to me, does not score here on this drive, it could all be but over here, here at the PPL Center. They've got to figure out how to stop this man. Not an easy assignment, but what a day for Warren Smith Jr. But imagine if you're Ray Wagner right now and you're, you were expected <laughs> to come in and play. He, he might. He might if it keeps going this way, but certainly Dayton has had answers today. Give them credit. They fought hard. Tough travel up from the Atlanta area, but they are certainly giving it a pretty good effort. Tighten up some of the mistakes and uh, you're looking at a much better performance, and that'll happen as time goes on, you'd think. Hotelling boots it. A chance. He hits the bullseye. It's a deuce. So he misses the extra point and says, you know what? Watch this. I'm not going to put one up on the board. I'll put up two. If I ever need a dark team, he's on my oh, knee. <laughs> that literally in the center of that bullseye, Matt, that was as perfect as a kick as Hotelling could have ever had. So nice job done there, and that's doing the little things right. Hotelling, good, good form, and <laughs> as we get a chance to take a look at it again here, I mean, you can see the nice follow through. Look at the ball as it's going perfectly, and boom, look at that, just absolutely perfect there by Hotelling, and you, you know what? <laughs> Michael Jackson called, and he wants his move back. I mean, my Michael, goodness you know, gracious. Do Michael Jackson does it a lot better than Hotelling, but I'll tell you what, the King of Pop couldn't kick one through the uprights from all the way back on the goal line. Absolutely, so uh, <laughs> my goodness. You know what? Coach Thompson talked a lot about Hotelling to us, and you can see why. And now they have to start from the shadow of those goal posts. Robinson in motion. Not a whole lot of room over the middle, and nearly caught. It was knocked away, a terrific play on defense made by Dom Joseph when it looked like Robinson was going to make the circus catch. If Robinson would have caught that, <laughs> I feel like he would have, that ball would have gone into orbit because he would have been hit so hard. Yeah. I just felt like that Joseph, he had to slow up there because if he knew if he hit him, it could have been um, uh, an unfortunate situation. It looked like he was stretching out his groin. And for a speedster, the one area you don't want to have troubling you is a nagging groin and he'll depart for the time being the good thing is a lot of depth at that Never wide receiver position we have another injury here matt for the steelhawks as you mentioned so you know it's alvarez i it, think and is it? it is alvarez and right oh, now no. too we've seen a lot of positives here today for the steelhawks but you know in, in alvarez he's being okay but he's being helped off all right but too many injuries right now we've yeah. seen too many guys getting nicked up here a little bit and i'm just hoping that these guys can bounce back and He'll be ready for game number two. Yeah, you hope he's okay. Obviously, walking out under his own power makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. And meanwhile, we'll keep an eye on Brian Robinson, who has been a guy that has been targeted a lot by quarterback Chris Brumfield today. He's off to the side. Again, I mentioned they have a pretty stacked wide receiver unit. So, Corey Alberti, Georgia State product, seven years in arena football is in. Up the middle, Guillaume tripped up, small gain, upended by, who was that on defense? It looked like it may have been, yeah, Coots finished it off, but I think it was maybe Bradley who got the initial hand in over the shins that upended Guillaume. And also, yeah. too, you see Joe Coots there as yeah. well in on the tackle, and, you know, they, they're still trying to run the football here. And it hasn't worked. It really hasn't, Matt. And I understand that you still have, look, you still have most of the third quarter and entire fourth quarter, anything can happen. But they need to start airing it out a little bit and trying to do what they can to score some points. Those guys up front have done a great job. Again, pressure, a home run ball. He throws a moneymaker, and it's caught. Reeled in inside the five-yard line. It's Trent Hicks. What a catch. What a throw by Brumfield. That was the best throw he made all day. And what a catch there by Hicks and, you know, looking for that big, tight play. And finally, Dayton getting that here in this third quarter. So, and, you know, but we've seen them down here in this yep. side. And then ben, they, but don't break for the Steelhawks today. And they end up taking a few steps back to Wolfpack. Can they convert? Tackle was Rodney Hall. Also, Davis the third preventing the touchdown. 
Man in motion, Guillaume, churning the legs, bowing forward, touchdown! The Wolfpack have answered. Guillaume, all effort there, would not be denied. And that right there was a touchdown needed, but now oh, a flag being thrown. Zola plays a touchdown after a play on sports play conduct, number 42 offense. That penalty will be banked and forced in the first play after the kickoff. Oh, so that's going to give a lot of yardage to the Steelhawks following the kickoff penalty. They said 42. I don't have a 42. I think they meant 24 with Rodney Hall. I think Rodney Hall. Junior was actually the one being award, awarded that penalty. So that's inexcusable. I just think that's the situation here for the Steelhawks that, you know, that's something that you wouldn't really like to see happen. Yeah, now I was thinking the penalty, was, someone threw the ball, and I thought the penalty was on day. We'll have to wait to see what happens here. Uh, Guillaume, rather, uh, 14 for 29 now with a touchdown. Here's the veteran, Terry. And another flag as he bangs one through. My guess would be a legal offense on the formation that's been troubling. Illegal formation yep. on the offense. Five yard penalty, retry. See now Vincent Bridges is the holder for the Wolf Pack. Hey, you know, credit this guy for holding things together. I mean, this guy that you see on your screen who's acting head coach today, a former player in this league, an offensive and defensive lineman, and Marcus Ray, you know, the early morning after the late arrival. You know, guys basically meeting and greeting and coming out and playing together. As we are seeing here on the replay, and you'll see 13, McFadden gets up and throws it. So number 13 yeah, there. McFadden. And then there's another penalty on this try. It's got to be frustrating when you're a veteran kicker like Terry. You've been in this game for so long. I mean, they can't get off a PAT. I mean, the, all the illegal formations. They had a snap issue on the first touchdown of the game. The PAT on a drop kick was no good. As you see right now trying to figure out what the ruling here is going to be. And, you know, the officials, I mean, for a first game, it's you hope for a little bit more fluidity, but... They've certainly earned their paycheck here oh, today. Yeah. They've done a good job, and now we're going to see Terry. He's going to try a longer field goal here from the 14. 43-24. Just to make it an 18-point game, and it is good. So Terry, who's got some friends and family here, thought he was going over to say hello. <laughs> He's egging him on. He's a character. He's having fun out there. When you've played this game for 16 years, you know, you got to have fun with it, and that's exactly what James Terry is doing. He understands how to play this game, and, you know, I'm sure when Dayton brought him on, they needed an experienced guy, a guy that can be, that can almost be like another coach. He could be like a player coach type deal, help talk to the guys, help be a motivator, kind of be a rah rah guy a little bit too. And, you know, with you and I getting a chance to talk with him as well as Christy talking with him before the game. We had a lot of laughs with him. I mean, the guy, he is. I, I said, look, why don't you come up and do some color with us? I was Give about us to say, you know, it would have been, fan you know, for him, he would have been fantastic. So. All right, well, we have a, a break in the action, immediate timeout here, 43-25. Steelhawks need 5.42 to go in the third quarter. Keep it here to TV2 Sports. Forty-three twenty-five. Steelhawks lead. Warren Smith Jr. six for six, a buck twenty-five and three touchdowns. He has been on the money here today. After you see a good throw there, and of course his receivers have been excellent in catching the football, but showing off that arm strength. You see the big deep ball by Smith here today, but also do precision type passing as well, placing it right where it needs to be. 
And then, hey, let's use my feet a little bit too, as he takes it right into the end zone. So he's throwing, he's, he's using his feet, Matt. He's got the entire package. There he is. And he has kept another very good quarterback on the bench to this point, Ray Wagner, who may have a bit of a stronger arm between the two. The guy that was in camp with the Steelhawks a couple of years ago didn't get kept by the Steelhawks, and then he burned them by getting a couple of wins with Harrisburg against Lehigh Valley. So I guess uh, if they beat you, let them join you. Kind right, of, yeah. <laughs> kind of paraphrasing an old exactly. saying. But, you know, while we were away, this we were joking around about the uh, James Terry and his uh, having fun out here. They, they had buckets set up for a contest, and he kicked over one of the buckets and got a rousing uh, boo from the crowd here. And now some, they just flag. It was a flag against him. And now he's a, this guy may have. Was he here last night for the wrestling event? I was about this to say. Entertainer. I was about to say, uh, I think he's dialing his inner WWE uh, superstar. I well, mean, my goodness. You better be careful now. It's gone from fun to being a little bit over the top as he gets into it with one of our officials today. You know, when say what you want, I mean, these fans, they've been they've been fantastic. They've been into it. Unsportsmanlike conduct foul, number 16 of the kicking team. That penalty been forced after the kickoff. <laughs> Crowd loves it. In some ways, though, as a showman, it's kind of brought to life <laughs> PPL Center because he was egging on the crowd and they were booing him. And it was the first real life we'd have today, aside from those touchdowns. And fans were getting into it. He was playing the villain role like you'd see in a wrestling performance. Uh, but when you start getting penalized and costing your teammates for the act, then it grows thin very quick. Absolutely. And, you know, and I'm sure Coach Ray and the staff at some point is going to say, hey, you know, we brought you on to obviously be a veteran voice. But at some point, though, you need to obviously focus on the play at hand. Yeah, if you're leading by example, and that's the example you're setting, that's not exactly what we look for. Right. Trolley, again a lane, gets to the outside. Trolley cuts it up. Trolley, is he in? Down at the one-yard line, maybe even closer to his second special team's touchdown of the day. My goodness, what speed, but as fast as he is and as good of a runner as we've seen. The blocking up front here once again, Matt. So the Steelhawks not only playing well on offense and defense, but blocking as well on special teams helps sets up that huge return here for the Steelhawks. Steelhawks want a touchdown. What they don't need is half the distance to the goal when it's only four inches away from the chalk. And Matt, I believe I see a flag, though I think yeah. maybe it was more so the result of the play is tackle on the one-yard line. After that, there are two penalties that were banked. They'll be enforced to the quarter-yard line. First down. <laughs> so they move it from the half-yard line to the quarter-yard line. Isaac Alford saved what would have been the second return touchdown by this talented rookie trolley, who fans are going to get to know, much like Eddie Davis III, who's been splendid defensively in his debut. This kid is going to be a terrific keeper here for the Steelhawks. I would have to think here that Bradley is <laughs> going to get a carry. Yeah. Godzilla behind him. We speak of Wiery's Bradley. They throw it in the flat. Touchdown. Another tossing touchdown for the quarterback Smith Jr. And he hooks up with Warren Oliver Jr. on his fifth strike of the day. Going to keep that quarterback efficiency rate up. Still perfect <laughs> on the day. I thought the, the easy run, but obviously Warren Smith still wants to keep it going. But right now we have another injured player on the field. But before we get to that, you see the nice quick little toss. And Oliver Jr., you know, enjoying the celebration. And, you know, for him it's been a good day. But once again, Matt, another, yeah, another injury. injury. I think it was Quadre Jones. I'm not sure. We'll take a look when we get a better view. And meanwhile, in the Steelhawks, have struck very quickly all throughout the course of today's game. They have been remarkable with how quick they get the ball downfield, the speed, that veteran wide receiver core that we talked about earlier in the broadcast, Mike, is certainly something that's going to wreak a lot of havoc this season in the NAL. If these receivers can get separation from the defensive backs, it's going to be a tough go of it for the rest of the teams here in the NAL. So we've seen some very good speed, and of Warren Smith Jr., 
you know, I don't know if he'll stay perfect in every game, but if he makes the throws and uses his speed accordingly, this offense for the Seahawks, I mean, they're at 14 right, right now. They could be, they could double that, you know, at this point. Yeah, it is indeed Quadre Jones, as I mentioned earlier, a Jacksonville State product, a defensive end here who's down. Now slowly lumbering back to the bench. Oliver Jr. a year ago, we talked so much about the numbers by Renford and Prince, but Oliver had 28 touch, uh, 28 uh, catches, 271 yards, eight touchdowns. So he has his first this year, and he continues to be a terrific supplement to an unbelievable stable of wideouts. You know, for the Wolf Pack right now, you're seeing another player walking off the field here, and you know the injury bug has certainly gone around here today, and now we are going to get a chance to see the foot again of Hotelli. Hmm. And again, he's able to knock one through. No, I beg your pardon, it was wide. Wide to the left. But remember, last time he missed an extra point, he followed up with a deuce. There is a penalty flag down, and the laundry has been uh, quite uh, a big part here of the third quarter. More flags in the United Nations right now. You ain't kidding. Personal foul, roughing the snap for number 27 defense. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal with one time down. So a penalty on a number we do not have. They called it on 27. I'm wondering if it was on either 21 or 7. Who knows? Regardless, another penalty. And uh, it does look like Rocky Carlisle, which would be 21. So, Hotelling gets another crack at it. 49-25. The one thing now that Marcus Ray has to do is make sure his troops kind of stay cool, level-headed, with the Steelhawks starting to push away a little bit here late third quarter. Tough snap, good hold, kick down, and it's through again. So, another extra point booted by Hotelling. We'll take a break here from the PPL Center in downtown Allentown, Pennsylvania. In the opener, Steelhawks 50, Wolfpack 25. Back here to Service Electric, Matt Province, Mike Ventola, Carl Graber, our statistician, Ed Stash, the producer, and of course Christy Fulkerson, who's been providing some terrific stuff from down on the sidelines. And this guy, he has a leg. Spencer Hotel, Susquehanna product. Kicks another one away, it hits the scoreboard. So. That'll deny his attempt for back-to-back -back deuces. And the Wolf Pack, who have been doubled up by the Steelhawks, will try to keep it going on offense. After an impressive drive last time, they had the football. So the ball here will start at the 20-yard line when hitting the scoreboard above. So now we'll see what Dayton can do once again here on offense. But, you know, the Steelhawks, they want to keep doing what they can to pull away here from the Wolf Pack. And now for... The Wolfpack, though, they need to try to find something here on offense. And, you know, they're going to try to look to Brumfield and company here as, you know, he made a couple of nice throws. So we'll see what he'll do here on this first play. Good to see that they still have the services of Brumfield left in the second quarter late after touchdown toss. And now another illegal motion. Inexcusable. Ball start. Number two on the offense, wide motion man going over line scrimmage, part of the snap, 10 yard penalty, first down. Robinson had a bunch of those, and you never know if the communication is on Robinson, on the quarterback, or on the snap, whatever. But he has been, you know, you can see he's, it looked like he was a little hobbled earlier, left and missed one series with what appeared to be some type of sore groin. He was stretching out as such, but it's good that he's back as well because he's their home run hitter. No, absolutely, and, you know, they need to 
find ways to get him more involved. And But the communication's got to be on the same page. And so now Brunfield looking towards his way. In trouble. In the end zone. Gets rid of it. Nearly a safety. Now maybe they're going to call the penalty for throwing it away. It's going to be a safety indeed. As the ball. The quarterback was out of the pocket. However, the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage, resulting in a safety. So resulting in a safety there, the Steelhawks getting two more points. And, you know, you see good pressure there up front. And for Brunfield, Alvarez. he had nowhere. But you see Alvarez, and there is Joe Koontz and company. So, I mean, these guys, and there's Josh Bradley there at the end. I mean, Coach Thompson, he has himself a very good defense. I know he's a little... Not to use the word worried, Matt, but a little sure. intrigued to see what his defensive line could do here today. I'm sure he's going to put a big old check mark saying, I think we're going to be just fine. Yeah, the veterans and the newcomers have played very well. And to talk more about that defense, let's bring back in Christy Fulkerson. Well, guys, I heard a little part of a defensive chat led by defensive coordinator Bob Kohler over on the Steelhawks bench, who was actually rounding up the first half of action. He said, we are not doing a good job exploding off blocks, getting upfield. We need to figure it out. We need to play Steelhawks football, not backyard football. They did get three turnovers in that first half. Turnover on downs to start this second half. And of course, that safety showing the improvement. He said he felt like they had some jitters. First game jitters needed to get that out of their system. But we're returning more to Steelhawks form, a team that was known for forcing turnovers and hurrying quarterbacks, especially last season, guys. Terry is going to kick it off. He's become the villain here. <laughs> Crowd giving him the business every time he steps on the field. Yeah, Christy, very interesting because, you know, again, we're up here and they're perfectionists down there. And the Steelhawks have taken this operation seriously, which is why they've had so much success. Five straight playoff berths and it's not being satisfied, but it's good to see that all that they've been doing here is intensifying as the game's gone on. The effort has gotten better and better seemingly every time they've stepped out onto the field on defense. No, absolutely. And, you know, it's Right now, the Steelhawks, they want to get back to what's allowed them to have success. They are doing so here in the third quarter, really overtaking this game. And now we are going to see a flag here. Delay a game. Number 16, the kicking team. Five-yard penalty will be enforced after the next play. Well, he might be joining us in the booth here next game. I mean, if he keeps this up. <laughs> Uh, I was, he's either going to get thrown out and leave without a kicker or they're going to go shopping for another one. I look, he's having fun out there, and we know, and we, having had a chance to talk with him before the game, you kind of felt as though if you didn't have a chance to talk, well, this guy is kind of a, a character, but that's just how he is. But when you cost your team penalty after penalty now, and this has happened repetitively in the third quarter, at some point you got to dial down the act a little bit. And I know he has a little talk show ex experience, <laughs> and which is great. But, you know, at some time, you know, but once you put the uniform on, you're a player. And, you know, for him, he, though, yes, it's, it has been entertaining. The fans are enjoying it, but you're costing your team now. Yeah. And that's when, you know, the coaching staff just won't be pleased. All right, here is a return by Prince. Crosses the field, gets knocked up against the Dashers at about the 23-yard line. Some pushing yeah. there, Matt. And now it's getting a little bit chippy. Scrum on the far side of the football field. Players being separated after the push out to the Dashers made by Isaac Alford. He has been very busy on special teams. Couple of stops. Also got some help from Rocky Carlisle. Nice return here. Darius Prince. And you see the initial hit and tackle by Alford. And I tell you, <laughs> this Steelhawks team, a lot of athleticism, but like you said, though, getting chippy there a little bit, but. We had the five yard delay game that was in the bank, first down. So that was from earlier. I, I kind of like the, the whole way the NAL goes about the penalties in the yes. bank, because there are times where, you know, you, you commit an infraction, you should pay a price, and at other levels of football, that doesn't always happen. Well, here they bank these penalties, and there's your five yards. I wonder if, how things would be different in, let's say, the NFL, if you could bank <laughs> penalties. Renford in motion. Ball is on the floor, on the turf there, as it was fumbled on the snap. But who's got it? It is Wagner who's in at quarterback. And on the bottom, it was the fullback who came away with the recovery and Godzilla Bradley. So now we're going to see Ray Wagner here for the first time. And already some 
a mishandling yeah. there at the snap. So you see Sean Lockett, the center, having a tough time there. So, but I think that was more on Wagner. You know, should have just tried to receive that ball a little cleanly. So now we're going to see, you know, a more prototypical type quarterback here in Wagner. Mickens was credited the stop. So it's second and long, call it 11. Renford in motion. They were looking for him, and then he checks down, finds Trolley, who is down to the 16-yard line before being spun to the ground by Rocky Carlisle. I mean, he is more of a prototypical quarterback. He's 6'3", 220. That's more of your normal quarterback-type build than you can see with the throw, and obviously doing a nice job moving to his left, seeing nothing down. And wide open there was Trolley, and, you know, at the end of the day, if the big, if the first option isn't going to be there we'll see what your second and third options are and a great job looking off that receiver and that's where getting the pressure on and the nal is so important from a defensive line perspective he's back over the middle caught touchdown flag is down in the end zone is prince it'll be his third touchdown if it stands and it will touchdown steelhawks on another pass reception Illegal defense, Jack Blitz, the penalty's declined. Touchdown. Another illegal defense, Matt, and you know, you see a nice job there by Darius Prince and a good throw by Ray Wagner as well. So as we get a chance to take a look, I mean, Wagner, nice job stepping back and spiral there on that football. And okay, a little low there at the end, but Prince was the only able receiver to catch that football. So a nice job by Wagner placing in. So. Uh, you know, we talked about that dual quarterback situation here for the Steelhawks in the opener, and so far, so good. 58-25 inside of 30 seconds remaining, third quarter. Five passing touchdowns between Wagner and Smith today. And another flag down, and I believe, again, it will be on the Wolfpack. Offside, defense, half the distance to goal, try. I tell you what. We better be, we might have to get our buddy Michael Davis some Tommy John surgery right there on the flag throws. Better ice down his elbow at the end of the game and he's, he's, doing, he's doing a great job because they're penalties and I'm sure he'd like to keep things moving along but you gotta call it. And he's done a great job making sure the game stays within the bounds of the NAL rules. Been very busy today and he's done a nice job, he and his crew. And I'm sure the head officiating crew here in the NAL is gonna be very pleased with their efforts today and Alrighty, now we have one final quarter of play. We'll have one on time down. We'll have the extra point here, then we'll have a change of quarter. We'll finish up with the extra point before we go away through three quarters. And here is Hotelling again, who will kick and try to add another point to his totals today. Missed one. Has been good on every other one. And now another defensive offsides as Quadre Jones, fortunately back in, had an injury scare earlier. And he jumps. Offside, number 11 on defense. That penalty will be banked and enforced on the first play after the kickoff. Try. They have just shot themselves in the foot. 11, 11. Quadre Jones, who limped off with some help earlier today, is fortunately back in. But snap, hold, kick, good. And Otelling has added another point. So we're done with three. Steelhawks extending that lead. It's now 59-25. We're back for the fourth quarter on TV2 Sports.
Well, those pom-poms have been going at a rapid rate here in the second half. As uh, we have seen the Steelhawks flex a little bit here in the NAL 2017 opener. Chris Thompson, after a little bit of a sluggish start for his team, has seen things started to go more towards the way he was hoping for. It's been a good collective defensive effort. And boy, that offense has looked splendid here in its first game of the year. I'll tell you, we're seeing Warren Smith Jr. having himself a fantastic day. Now Ray Wagner is in the game, and he already throws a touchdown pass. But the receiving core of Renford and Prince, I got to be honest with you, I mean, for the rest of the NAL, they could have their hands full with this receiving core. Defensive backs need to be weary of these guys. That third quarter dominated by the Steelhawks to the tune of 24-7. Robinson, the blazer, is back for the kick from Hotelling, who has one deuce today, and this one will go a little bit left again, and the ball will be placed at the 20-yard line. Look, it's, it would be some sort of a monumental comeback for the Wolfpack here. We're trailing 59-25, but one thing they can do is build upon yeah. this game is finish this quarter yeah. strong, make good plays, score some points, play the sound defense. Penalty on the try will be enforced That's right, we have the penalty in the bank. Remember the five-yard penalty. I love that. It's a great rule because normally what's half the distance to the goal anyway when you're kicking a field goal from either, what, the two-and-a-half or the one-and-five-eighths or the, you know, Five yards now, and it seems to make sense. You actually get penalized for a penalty. Right. Makes perfect sense. Because, you know, especially here, I mean, kickers, they have enough leg strength, like you mentioned, to if it's a couple yards back. But here, where it, to me it matters more, now you put, you're putting Dayton five yards back, and now, and they've had, they've had some moments where they hadn't had the ability to get out of their own way. First time today we've seen two backs in the backfield. Now one is going to go in motion, so there goes... Hicks, who had a long catch earlier. They're looking for him again. Will he get the ball there? It's a jump ball, and it's broken up again. Steelhawks got back on D, and I believe it was Hall who made the play to break it up. Davis the third was there as well, and now Hicks slow to get up off the turf. And yet, Mike, another penalty flag down. Illegal motion. The motion man started from the box. Five-yard yeah. penalty. First down. Remember how I just said earlier, it's the first time we've seen two men in the backfield. Well, he was in the box, so he can't go in motion as per NAL rules. He went in motion from that position, and as a result, flag. It's just, if Dayton is finding ways to have themselves penalized, it's just unbelievable how many times they've been flagged here today. I know we've, you and I, we've covered a lot about their ability that, okay, they're just getting together for the first time. They're you know, they're just getting to know one another, which is, yes, okay, so maybe not every penalty, but there are certain penalties, like the little things that's football one-on-one that should, they shouldn't be committing mistakes on. Robinson goes in motion. He's waved back by his quarterback just to make sure he doesn't get that false start. Here's the snap. Pass caught at the 20. Nice grab in traffic by Alberti. Finally mentioned his name. Feels like it's been a little while. Tackles made by Hall and Dom Joseph. Got a lot of that yardage back. It's now second and four. He was an original Steelhawk, year one. Guillaume, a little bit of a crease, still shy of the first down. Wrestled to the ground by Eddie Ume. A third and short, that was a good run. But now as you see a hurry up type offense here is you get a chance to see the handoff, but bobbled a little bit there. My goodness gracious. Big man showing some nimble hands. I think he understood the importance. If I drop this thing, I might as well just head to the locker room. I'm done. Third and about two. That one caught up against the Dashers at the 20-yard line. Catch made by Alberti. And the stop by Eddie Ume. And I'm surprised Dayton didn't do more of that throughout the game today. Instead of, yes, I understand the traditional drop back, but you have an athletic quarterback in Brumfield. Why not move him around in the pocket yeah. a little bit and try to create something? And, you know, now it looks like it's just going to be a little too late. And with Alberti and McFadden, they have two very nice possession receivers that, you know, you still have to show the deep ball and take some chances, but some of these out routes can move the chains. Guillaume. Meets Kuntz, who gives no ground. Gain of just maybe two. 
We've had a lot of two and three yard pickups by him here today. And, you know, I'm sure he would wish he could have had more of that six, seven, eight, nine, ten yard type runs. And, you know, but that's a credit to the Steelhawks defense, not allowing him to get to that second level. I'd love to see how many tackles Coons has because he has been in so many plays. Now, obviously, many of those came early on. Steelhawks are getting back more towards the time of possession in the second half. But he has made uh, double digit tackles and some of them with no assistance. And he looked with a pump fake. And there's what Mike Ventola called for. Slid into the dasher board very hard. And the Outback sign credited with its first tackle today. <laughs> and, 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 and a hard a good time one. He got out of the coots, may not hit as hard as the Outback sign, my, believe it or not. My <laughs> goodness. I was about to say that Outback sign uh, had a little uh, extra on that one. So, I mean, but look at. Brumfield here as he just takes it. There's nothing to his right, just run, and he did a wonderful job of getting low because he saw a freight train yeah. coming his way. Ume and Koontz barreling down. There is Koontz. He is a player. Fans are going to love watching him. I heard some Koontz chants earlier today. Hicks in motion. Ball is dropped. Fumbled. Picked up by the Steelhawks. And down to the 21-yard line with the recovery goes Josh Bradley. You know, I got to see that replay because I think Brumfield bumped into Guillaume. I really think that happened. So just a, a series of unfortunate events. So you see Brumfield as he comes back. And oh no, he did not hit him. He just took his eyes off the football. And you see Demarcus Johnson and for Dayton rather, but nice pick up there though for the Steelhawks and Josh Bradley. So another turnover and now a chance to really try to put some nails in the coffin as the old saying goes. 11-10 to go, fourth quarter action. Man in motion is Oliver Jr. Godzilla turns the corner, carrying men with him down to the 16-yard line. Nice run by Wyrie's Bradley. I know King Kong's in theaters right now, but there's <laughs> going to be a new uh, feature film here, and that's going to be this guy here in Godzilla. But as we go back to the to the fumble, I mean, not the best snap. And as you see, and it looked like it did get a piece of Guillerme. So Guillerme bouncing back a little bit, just a little touch, and now the football dropped out. So uh, just a series of unfortunate events here today. Darius Murphy had the honor and privilege of getting in the way of that freight train to make the tackle on the run before setting up second and about i'll call it a short five trolley in motion and they're looking for him that ball is knocked away and intercepted no he couldn't hang on or did he he did it's mickens with a big pick keeping daytona or dayton rather alive mickens on the interception that is the first incomplete pass today that's right. Lehigh Valley Steelhawk quarterback. <laughs> and sadly, it's a turnover if you're a Steelhawks fan. But, you know, for Wagner, I can't fault him too much. You know, looks like as he makes the throw. Nice job, though. Mickens <laughs> reading that, and he crashed into the siding there. But, you know, Trolley, not sure if he could have done much more, but I'm going to give the credit more there to Mickens. He read that pass very well. He did read it well, and then to hold on, and it looked like, you know, where it's on the far side dasher board, the way he went headlong into that thing, I didn't know if he was going to hang on to it, but somehow he was able to do so. Remember, he recovered the fumble for a touchdown on the opening kickoff to start play, so he's been around a couple of turnovers now, and he keeps the Wolf Pack just alive for the time being. Nowhere to go, Guillaume wrestled down by a trio, including Kuntz. I understand that you're trying to get him going, but with 9.38 and counting, to me now seeing these runs, I don't want to say that Dayton is looking on to game number two, but I think now they're starting to realize that by us just trying to force it may not work, so let's put together some good plays and finish strong here at this point. Ume McClam in on the last tackle. Meanwhile, you'll see this Steelhawk team on the road the next couple of weeks. Rumfield looking, wants the deep ball, instead checks down. It's broken up, and then a contact maybe on the Steelhawks. Eddie Ume was the one who broke up the intended pass, but uh, now we'll see what that flag is all about, whether or not Brumfield got lit up after the pass on the dasher. Talk it over. They're weighing this one. I think they just want to make sure that 
obviously they want to get every call right, but. Each team, of course, they will have one coach on the field. Two fouls on the play. Well, in the our, an elk men run downfield on the offense, five-yard penalty. We have a personal foul on the defense. By rule, the five-yard penalty be declined. First down with a 10-yard penalty. And again, another nice rule, the NAL. They take the difference in the yardage, so it's not quite 15, even though it trumps the five-yard penalty, so a 10-yard infraction. And they move the chains, does the uh, Wolf Pack. It'll be first and 10 from the 16-yard line. Hey, to me, that's one of the interesting things here about the NAL is having a coordinator on the field at one time. So you see Dayton's offensive coordinators on the field right now and Lehigh Valley's defensive coordinator. So because of not the traditional sideline that you see more in the college game in the NFL. Guillaume, tough sledding again, and a trio of Steelhawks make the stop, including Kuntz, and on the tackle also is Bradley, and McClam, McClam, boy, we have called out several names all day long, but McClam up front, flanked with Bradley and Dover have done just a terrific job not allowing any momentum by that offensive line. Eddie McClam, I mean, he's a guy, you talked about it, Matt, you know, who's a guy that was in camp with the Philadelphia Eagles. He's been on the radar of some higher teams, as you mentioned as well, too, but to go along my thought here, you know, when you have that type of experience, it's valuable. Guys want to be around guys that have that type of experience. Robinson on a deep post, intercepted! It's another pick for Eddie Davis the third, his third pick, and he's still weaving, but he loses the football recovered by one of his teammates. Holy Toledo. He got a little bit of everything today, and there to make the recovery for the Steelhawks was uh, Dom Joseph. And Davis the third in his first game as a Steelhawk, a kid that is still enrolled in Rowan, finished up his football season there, has been terrific in his NAL debut. What a pick there by Eddie Davis the third. He read that pass the entire way. Why did he read that pass? He's got Eddie Davis eyes. <laughs> I wasn't going to step in and ruin your thunder there, because <laughs> that's been you all day. But you are right, though. He's got those Eddie Davis eyes. And you know what? I tell you, he's a guy that has really impressed a lot of people today, including myself. I mean, he's going to be quite a force here in the NAL. Trolley in motion. And a little hitch out to Prince, who's quickly wrapped up and dropped. And that tackle made by Alford, who's been very busy. He's their ball hawk on defense, and he's made a lot of big play saving stops today. That one, just a short game, maybe just two. And I understand Wagner is trying to throw the football a little bit, trying to get into a groove. You know, he wants to play more of his type of football, but I'm surprised that Lehigh Valley isn't going to look to, you know, try to run it a little bit more. and. And obviously, I know the clock always continues to run, but just try to see what the running game still has to offer here a little bit. Like to see a little bit more Godzilla. Yeah, the bulldozer. Nice hook up there on the slant route as it's reeled in by Prince. And long enough to move the chains. It'll be first and goal for the Steelhawks. Yeah, honest with you, man. Wagner made a real nice throw. That was a good slant pattern there by Prince. And I mean, these Steelhawks, this second half has been pretty clean. It's been pretty good overall. And you know, it's just really the one pick. You know, the one interception was yep. kind of the only, you know, little blemish on what's been a terrific half so far for the home team now as we're inside of 6-11 left to play. Timeout, Dayton. That was the first charge timeout. Dayton, the timeout. How about the numbers for Prince, who led them in receiving a year ago? Mike, I've got him because of, uh, of course, Carl Graber and his very trustworthy pen at five receptions for 84 yards and three touchdowns. What a day. And... And I'm sure whether you're quarterback Ray Wagner or quarterback Warren Smith Jr., you know, you want to take care of your wide receivers. And But you, but the wide receivers, they want to make sure their quarterbacks look good. So it's been a very good chemistry from what we're seeing here today in Prince. I know we've talked a lot about Eddie Davis on the defensive side, but you look at what he's done here on the offensive side. And I'm sure today, too, that, you know, and one thing that with these guys playing, higher levels tend to keep an eye on guys down here in these types of levels, too. So the NAL has produced a lot of talent. I wonder if a guy like Prince is on somebody's radar. I tell you what, he has been raining purple today. A little purple rain for Prince. His only symbol is INT, all right? That's his symbol. All right, here we go. Back to action, 6.05 to go. 59.25. It's one of the best concerts I've seen to date, Matt. Really? It's kind of a 
What a miss, Jim. Down on the floor in Philadelphia. Valuable commodity, that ticket. Absolutely. Got it saved. Man in motion. They flip it to Godzilla. And look at the effort. And why is Bradley thinks it's got a touchdown. Meanwhile, the Wolfpack thinks it has a turnover. And Aaron Appleby is running downfield, hoping that that's going to stand as a fumble. The question is, did the ball cross the plane, or did it hit the turf and get knocked loose? And if it got knocked loose, was he brought down by a defender, which would be a dead ball. Ground obviously can't cause the fumble. And what is the ruling? It looks like it's coming back. So as we see the run here, and it looked like, like a it touchdown, right? Looked like the knee might have been down. So if anything, yeah. Just, and the knee would have been down at about the two and a half, right? That's right. Yeah, they're calling it a touchdown. There was no signal from the. Uh, I didn't see a signal for touchdown, but here comes the extra point. The special teams. You're right. It looks like he was already knee on ground before the extension. And now for the extra point to make it a 66-25 game. Right now, a 40-point lead as Hotelling pulls on. 31-7 Steelhawks in the second half. Their lead has ballooned to 41. We'll take a final break. 4.48 to go. Fourth quarter action from the PPL Center. All Steelhawks in the opener. All right, you look at the Steelhawks bench, and you know, it was a little bit of an interesting start to the game we had on the very first play of the 2017 season. A fumbled kickoff recovered in the end zone by the Wolfpack, and kind of crickets here at the PPL Center. Well, you know what? It hasn't been crickets since. It has been a lot of scoring. It has been terrific quarterback play. It has been disciplined play, which obviously Dayton's had some issues with the penalty number today. And here is Hotelling, who misses just again left on a deuce attempt. And it will be at the 20-yard line, where the Wolfpack will set up shop inside of 440 to go. At least you got one deuce today, but really a nice strong lay there by Hotelling. But Matt, as you were saying, you know, the Lehigh Valley Steelhawks today, yes, there's certain things they need to improve upon, but look, it was game one. They came out today, overall played extremely well on the offensive side, defensively as well, too. To me, might even been a little bit better than what they did on the offensive side, just on how many turnovers um, from what we've seen, especially with all the interceptions by Eddie Davis the third. So, you know, this Steel Hawks team, they did what they had to do. A first-time team in the Dayton Wolf Pack trying to figure themselves out. This was a commanding victory here for the Steel Hawks, as long as you know, the Wolfpack here don't score a few more points before the end of this game. So we have a new uh, quarterback here. James Moreland, who came in towards the end of the first half after Brumfield left a little shaken up, returns. We'll get some live action here. Guillaume stays beside him in the backfield. And on first down, back to pass. Heavy pressure. Stays on his feet miraculously. Rolling out and eventually spilled at the three-yard line. What pursuit by the defense of the Steelhawks. And ultimately, it's Coots again. I understand it's easy from our position up here to sit there and say, why didn't you just take the hit the first time? But he really should have. And that is just, it's credit Lehigh Valley. They did everything they should have on that play. But Moreland there has just got to take his lumps and take the sack. You, as you're breaking away, that to me, is just yeah he had that one little uh, moment where he probably right. could have gotten rid of it instead of trying to make the circus play but when this guy is chasing after you it's a lot easier up here with the headsets on to make those decisions because right. Coons is relentless like a shark on some bloody meat in the ocean I mean he is all over the opposing players today over the middle caught it's the big target McFadden who spun down to the ground on a tackle made by Tom Joseph 
Good throw, good route. And now there was a good play, getting still about a couple yards shy of the original line of scrimmage. So if you can get a good play here, Matt, make it a more manageable for them. Well, you hope, too, that this team will get better at an exponential rate, the Wolfpack, as they get more time together playing. You know, it's tough for them to compete against a team like the Steelhawks, considering what they've been through the last month. Again, pressure, he goes down. He's spilled by McClam, who gobbles him up for a sack. McClam clamoring on Moreland here on that play. Just a very nice job breaking through that offensive line and chasing him down. And Moreland really with nowhere to go, and you just see McClam coming yeah. on, and boom, just brings him right down. Yeah, I stand corrected. That is Bradley. Oh, that's right, Bradley. Yeah. Tough on the black on black numbers from up here in the rafters. <laughs> that is certainly a 92, time which is the number of Bradley. That's a second timeout. Product of Benedict as we get the second timeout of the second half here for the Dayton Wolfpack. Well, we talked about McClam all throughout the day, his chance at the Eagles earlier with more information on the big fellow. Let's send it down to Christy Fulkerson. Well, that's right, guys. I had a chance to talk to Eddie actually during preseason camp, and he said that's actually the last time he played football back in 2013 when he was with the Eagles in camp. Of course, he played college ball at Old Dominion, but as well as he's played along with this defense, he is new to the arena game. He said, I'd like to tell you it's still football, and in some ways it is, but there's a lot of nuances, a lot of things that these guys have to learn. And even though they've played at the Division One level, even the NFL level, this game indoors is very different. I did say, hey, by the way, this defense is, is known for being pretty darn good here in the Lehigh Valley. I don't know if you've heard. He said, I didn't know that, but I do now. Last year, 31 interceptions, 20 and a half sacks, six defensive touchdowns, and he said, I'll make sure that we keep the tradition ongoing this season, guys. Well, he's done his part, Christy. Thank you. And, and Davis may have 31 intercessions himself this season. And so they're going to kick it here. This is the villain number one at the PPL Center, James Terry, who boots it. Ball is eventually reeled in. Good downfield tackle. A one on one opportunity. It's Guillaume who spills. Dom Joseph, so Guillaume getting the tackle. They changed the field position around a little bit, but now inside of two minutes, you'll probably see the Steelhawks look to run this thing out. You know, I know punting doesn't take place here in the NAL, but to me, it looked like that kick was yeah. just get it on the other side of the field at that point. It looked, didn't look like that Terry was really trying to go for uh, the field goal there at that point, so, but. I think you're right. I think the Steelhawks here, they just need to wisely try to run this thing out. They'll play next week at High County. Then they'll have a tough bout down in Florida against Jacksonville. Time out on the field. So two more road games. And then they'll come back for a series of three straight at home beginning April 9th when Columbus is in town, a 5 p.m. game at the PPL Center with all the action for you here, of course, on TV2 Sports. Prince has had the big day. Here is Bradley, stiff arming, still on his feet, churning his legs and getting down to the 20 yard line after a nine yard gain and eventually a tackle by Mickens. I'll tell you, I talked about earlier how Mayorga reminded me of Mike Allstott. <laughs> this has got like a little Jerome Bettis. He's like the bus out there. Look at him just stumbling through. Look at him go. I mean, the bus, I mean, it might be uh, the, the, the Florida Georgia Line tour bus that pulled into town here Thursday night for a concert at the PPL Center. I mean, this guy is a load, and he's tough to bring down. He keeps those legs going. But the minute warning here, and uh, you know, Matt, I mean, Coach Thompson, I'm sure today, once this game is yeah. done, it'll be on to game two, of course, but really a lot to be happy uh, happy for here this afternoon <laughs> some confusion here the players are ready to go but there's a promotional crew on the field as it's supposed to be a break hey you know what credit the city of allentown pennsylvania because remember for a while there there wasn't a whole lot of life going on downtown in the valley you know the days of the hess building and all these things all the stories you've heard were gone and then you know the vision to bring back something like the ppl center and look at what we've had the last handful of days. You had a major country music concert with, with, with Florida Georgia Line. You've had big time minor league hockey with the Phantoms. You had wrestling, you know, the WWE, I guess yeah, it is. The WWE. Yeah, the WWE. And then now you have arena football. So this is unbelievable. Four straight days of 
great entertainment right here in the heart of downtown Allentown in this beautiful facility, the PPL Center. And a guy who has shined for his first time on the Squack Turf, my man, Eddie Davis III. My goodness, and he do certainly does have eyes like Eddie Davis. Look at the way he has come down with these interceptions here today. That was the first interception, and coming across there, that was interception number two. And Davis, it seems like he's just a true ball hawk. And obviously, being a steel hawk, it works perfectly. But that might have been his best one, because he looked like he read the quarterback the entire time. He gets a game ball here today. He was outstanding. <laughs> and a great, whoa, one of the fans just nailed a field goal to the bullseye in one of the contests they do here. I'll tell you what, keep your eyes out for this guy. He kicked that thing right through the uprights. You know, great job by the production crew, by the way, because on that third interception, which was maybe the most athletic of the three, turned in by Eddie Davis the third, they have put it on the turf during his attempt to try to continue to advance the football. <laughs> Luckily, one of his teammates gobbled up the loose ball, but they did a good job cutting that short. Look at this. I don't know number 12's name, but some teams here in the NAL might want to take a look. I mean, boom, the bullseye. Are you kidding me? He did that with sneakers, too. Yeah. He did that with long pants and a sweatshirt on. I mean, my goodness gracious, the guy was perfect. Maybe that's Spencer Motelling. I mean, Hotelling's been kicking it through the uprights all day. Man, it's Motelling. Here's Renford. His first run today, good for about seven before being spilled at the 15-yard line. Renford had a touchdown catch, a short little hitch earlier in the game in the first half, and now we're inside of one minute here at the PPL Center. Looks like there may be just one, maybe two more plays, but as the clock will head on down to zero here, Matt, and just a good victory here for the Steelhawks. Yeah, yeah. Very impressed with how the defense chilled during the course of the game. Just seven second half points yielded by that tough defense. Renford in motion. Out to the near side. Nice run after the catch right there. As you see Warren Oliver Jr. on a shifty move and eventually brought down by Mickens, who's had a very good day. Mickens a touchdown in the opening kickoff later in interception. And now we'll see if they'll kneel it out, which they will. We're down to two, and there's the buzzer in the opener of 2017 in their inaugural game in the National Arena League, the NAL. It's the Steelhawks who get the big win by the final of 66 to 25. We'll be back to wrap things up for the PPL Center. Again, big win for the Steelhawks. More coverage coming up next on TV2 Sports. All right, Matt Province, Mike Ventola back a final time to recap an opening day victory, a big one for the Steelhawks, 66-25. And, you know, if you're a guy making a debut like Eddie Davis the third, you want to make an impact. How about not one interception, not two, but three? Eddie Davis the third had three, and now he's got Christy Fulkerson. At least it wasn't the first half is over. First <laughs> half is over. The game is over, too. But congratulations. You come out with a win. Head coach Chris Thompson, just talk about what it means to come out here and get your first W of the season. Well, you know, we obviously didn't start out on the right foot in the first half and, and was a little sloppy play. And uh, But, we, you know, we, we got things accomplished and, and got some things on film. And now it's back to, to practice and, and grind and, and the film and, and get better. You can take a lot after finally seeing the first game like situation. I know you have a lot of veterans on this team, but some rookies really stood out today as well. Yeah, we definitely had some rookies step up and, you know, and, and obviously one of them right here, Eddie Davis, a rookie from Rowan University, had, I think, what, three or four interceptions tonight? Three, but yes. <laughs> Good. 
so yeah, I mean, and we expect that, you know, from him and, and from some of these other rookies that are here. And, you know, that's, like I said, camp was very competitive and, and that's what we, uh, we want these guys to keep, you know, progressing. Thanks, Chris, for the time. Eddie, I want to ask you two, three this week, maybe four next week, right? Just talk about what it was like to play your first arena game tonight. Um, it's definitely like mind blowing. You know? It was better than what I expected. Uh, I had real, a lot of fun. It was real exciting. I'm just ready for next week. What's the team takeaway from your first one of the season? Obviously, there's still work to be done. Uh, definitely let us know where we're at and where we need to be. So uh, it's our first time going to get someone else other than ourselves. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we could take a lot to learn from this game. Congratulations on a great game. Appreciate it. Back to you, Matt. Great job by Christy Fulkerson, matching the effort of that guy. And one guy, too, we'd be remiss uh, not to talk about before we bid adieu, the quarterback today, Warren Smith, Jr. Warren Smith, Jr. was perfect on the afternoon. A couple of touchdown passes and getting a chance to use get one with his legs as well. He was perfect on the afternoon. And Warren Smith, Jr., to me, was as good as anybody on offense. And he's definitely a quarterback that the NAL needs to keep an eye on. So he was 7 of 7, 126 yards, 4 touchdowns, and, of course, Davis the third, 3 interceptions and 3 pass breakups. All right, well, it was an excellent first game. Many more to come, including our next broadcast on the 9th when Columbus is in town. Uh, but a lot of people to thank, starting with our statistician, Carl Graber, our spotter, Xander Province, and, of course, back in the truck, producer Ed Stash and the entire two crew. For Christy Fulkerson, by far the best-looking member of the trio, and for Mike Vincent.